Hey, j Bone Nation! Shaming of Jay! He's not a dopey dumb bitch! He gets late. The court jester! The court DJ! It's time to dive into the case! Case. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning, good morning. I see Janique coming in hot, gifting out 50 memberships. Holy cannoli. Thank you so much, Janique. Uh, that was amazing. Good to see you. Hope you and Jazzy are doing well. That was really too kind of you, Janique. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I got kick up. I didn't mess that up this time, so that should be good and going. Yes, I see Sheila's on there. Tracy, Debbie. Missy Ann, sorry guys, I messed up kick yesterday, but we should be good to go today. Good morning, Angie, Catherine, Amy, Mom and Dad, Cabo. I knew Cabo saw Tato, and I knew she couldn't, she wouldn't miss this for the world. Uh, we miss Jazzy, Janique. Thanks so much for being here. Natasha, Missy, Kieferbo, Shannon L, Deja, Joanne, Vivster. Uh, Janet, Angie, did I, I'm going to forget all the names, Joanne, Tashi, Sarah, MJ, Donnie, good morning, good morning, thank you all so much for being here, Drenda, Amy, Tina, uh, Sweet Lou, Betty, Kavla, uh, I'm probably missing people, I hope I don't, Blair, the Dizster, Angel Baby, Good morning, good morning, good morning. Sorry if I missed you. Tracy, again, Janique. Uh, Carrie, 28. Sorry if I miss you. I try to get everybody, but it's... Hello, Spring Kim, Todd, Serena. Um, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, Judy D. Uh, Teresa, Groot, everyone, thanks for being here. Diamond Girl, hello. Uh, Warflare, Melanie Donnie Kuntz, we got two Donnies in here. Donnie squared. Natasha says, only four more days until Justivus. You got it, baby. We, we're ready to go. Um, You're welcome, Angie. All right, so folks, we are going to watch. This is going to be a two-day thing, guys. This is going to be a two-day thing because there ain't no way we're going to finish Tato's police testimony, which is about two hours, and then all of his testimony from... The three trials because he is there's he's not like uh, Jeff where it's kind of quick and he's out. Tato is like the star witness in this case. Without Tato, this I really they probably I mean and uh, James Rieger, um, Dan's neighbor, but Tato is is the star in this case. Without him, do, does does everyone ever go down? I don't know. But so we're gonna start with the police interview today. Get through some of the testimony from the first trial. I don't know if we'll finish it all. Um, and then tomorrow we'll continue. This is probably going to be a, a two-day thing. And then um, after those two days, what I think we'll finish the week with is Katie Magbanahua. Magbanawa. Katie Magbanawa, because that's probably going to be two days too. But not only do we have her uh, testimony... We have her recent proffers, which should be super interesting to watch now, if you haven't already. I've seen parts of them, but not the whole proffers, so uh, I think we'll do that. Good morning, Austin. Good morning, Giovanna. Um, Veronica B. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for coming back and watching us. Amy, Bo, Donna, Janet. Um, and again, hopefully all this leaves, leads to some some way in the ether getting Wendy 
I know it's not me, or of course, but imagine last time I did something about Grandma Gotti, she got arrested the next day. So again, so we'll do Tato today, police interview, testimony, part one. We'll do more testimony tomorrow. And then Katie Magbana. Oh, wait, I don't have the sound effects on. Katie. Hello. Katie Magbana. Hoo-ha. Katie Magbana. Hoo-ha. And then we'll do we'll finish out the week with that. And then Saturday is Jestivus. For folks who don't know, I am on Kick. Kick is much more liberal. You can play they don't make a copyright claim for everything in the world. Like, by the way, guys, yesterday I got a copyright claim for Wu Tang Cream. So now I gotta take that off. I've been using it over and over a million times. All of a sudden yesterday I got a claim for it. So we now have a new song when I get a super chat. I think you guys will like it, but if you're not on Kick, it's just like uh, YouTube. It's a competitor. It's free. It's not like a paid thing. So I'm going to put the link in here if you want to join us on Saturday, which Saturday is an all-day stream, well, like 12 hours probably. We try to raise money for a, a Long Island food bank, L.I. Cares. It was started by Harry Chapin. We have some big names, folks. We have Kerry Ross and Lauren Lee Malloy. Our mods are going to be there. Uh, Mandy, Missy. Uh, Stevie. Oh, and by the way, let me just take a second here. Speaking of our mods, one of our, our, our beloveds. Oh, one second. Sarah wants to hear the new song. Hopefully it works. I want to hear the new song. There it was, Sarah. It's Beetlejuice. Oh, Deja wants to hear it too. Here it comes again. It's Beetlejuice. I said money. Money. I want to hear the new songs. And I, I don't think that uh, Beetle has copyright claims. I don't think he has a CD out there. I could be wrong. But thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Deja. There's the new song. Um, Diamond Girls from Long Island. Melissa, hello. Um, thank you so much, Deja. And... Sarah. All right. Again, speaking of, of our mods, for folks who do know and for folks who don't, maybe our beloved mod, Janet, we love her. She's amazing. Um, she has uh, her profile picture is her dogs and she loves her dogs. She has a few of them. And Tilly, her dog, um, had got cancer and she had been spending the last few days with her. And she had to put her down yesterday. So if you see Janet on the interwebs, maybe send her um, some thoughts of, you know, some T's and P's, some good, you know, just let her know you're thinking about her. Um, obviously, yesterday had to be uh, extremely hard for her. So uh, if you see Janet, just let her know. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so... Um, just wanted to let folks know if you see her, let her know. But we will, so now we will watch, um, we will watch the testimony, the police interview with Luis Rivera. The, I'm just going to warn you guys, the audio is not great. Now, this interview, interview is from October 4th, 2016. Um, and uh, so here we go. Let's set it up without further ado. Is the audio not working at all? Why do I not hear audio? Hold on. Do you guys not hear anything? I hear it, I mean, but do you... 
There we go. Here's the deal, guys. The audio is not great. I think if you, it might be only coming out of one ear. In my headphones, I hear it fine, but I see some folks saying that they can hear it. I think it's only coming out of one headphone. I'm not sure. It's on all the videos. The audio is not good. That's just, unfortunately, that's just how it is. And I tried putting on closed captioning, and it doesn't work. So uh, I'm sorry. I don't know. It might be some. Someone said it might be an AirPod issue. But uh, I can hear it through my headphones, so I'm not sure. Holy shit. Donna White with a $100 Venmo. Merry Christmas to you, Shannon, and family. I will be on sporadically over the holidays, but be back for January 2 trial for sure. Thanks for the fun and growing the channel. Yeah, for you guys. Holy shit, Donna White. You are amazing. Thank you so, so much. That is so incredibly kind. Thank you, Donna.
So just off the bat, if I am a a Latin King member and like my job is to rob other like Tato would bust in and just on other people like drug dealers and take their money. I'm telling you right now, my nickname for that would not be Jack Boy. I'm not sure why some people cannot can hear it and some people can't. I don't understand what's happening. To me, it sounds great, and I know some people are saying they can't hear anything. I don't. I don't. I don't understand it. Um, I it's it's not making any sense. I, I don't understand. I could try from a different. I, I don't know. All right, I'm going to try it from another page and see if it works. Let me let me know if this way works.
Zafiro says if you have AirPods and you can only hear with both in, try changing your AirPod settings to fixed spatialized stereo. Sorry for folks who don't have the audio. I wish I had an answer, but I'm not sure why some people can hear it loud and clear and some can't. I can hear it loud and clear. Uh, I wish I had an answer. Uh, Just a little background, if you weren't aware, Tato, who is speaking right now, Luis Rivera, um, is a member. He was a king, King Tato. He was the head of the Northwest Miami, um, 
Latin Kings. He he was the head since like he was 15 years old. And he had already been up on RICO charges and the death penalty was on the table. And that's when he, you know, he just, he decided he was going to uh flip and give this for the deal. He got a deal to get off the death penalty and get like less time. And that's that's why he flipped. He got the plea deal and that's why he testified. And I mean, for folks who have seen Tato testify, he's telling the truth, in my opinion. He's probably one of the most truthful people in the entire trial. Uh, Tato, Luis Rivera. What's up, Brooklyn? Um, hey, Patricia, thanks for being here, everybody. Someone had con commented an interesting theory about the money being moldy uh, in that Donna washed the money from the first trip. If you don't, guys don't know what he's explaining is Tata and Tuta went on two trips. They went down in the beginning of June and they came back and then they went down when they ultimately did it, July 18th. But the theory the commenter made, which made sense was you know, Grandma Gotti, Donna Adelson, who washed the money probably because she thought laundering money meant cleaning off the prints, even though that doesn't mean that's not what it means. But let's theoretically, if she washed the money in June and just like threw it in bags, then if July they go to pay with that money, then it would be moldy, right? It wouldn't be moldy from like one day if she did it. So possibly Grandma Gotti washes the money for the June trip is expecting to pay. But then they come back and don't pay. So she's got this money that she just keeps. And then again, it came out in the trial that when Katie Magbano had testified that she, she calls uh, Sigfredo and is like, the money is moldy. He's like, what are you talking about? Dry it. But anyway, just an just a interesting theory that I thought made sense. By the way, separately, uh, 10 more subscribers and we hit 7K, folks. 10 more to 7K.
excellent point from Veronica B, who says, Southern interview do is basically lying horizontally in the chair. Yeah, I'm not a chiropractor or any sort of physician, but I feel like this is not a good position for your back. Fuck your life, bing bong. Oh, shit. Uh, Tina gifting out 10 memberships. Thank you so much, Tina. What? I'm going to bunk with you, buddy. We're going to be buddies. We're going to be pals. We're going to wrestle the rock. Thank you so much, Tina. Welcome to all the new members. Get out the Capri Suns. Thank you so much, Tina. You rock. Oh, shit. Missy gifting out 10 memberships. Thank you so much, Missy. Welcome to all the new members. Thank you so much, Missy. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I'm going to bunk with you, buddy. We're going to be buddies. We're going to be... Tina gifting out another 10 you, memberships? Holy crap, Tina. Thank you so, so much, Tina and Missy. Tina gifted out 20 today. Thank you so much. Look at all these new members. Holy shamoli. Thank you so much, Tina and Missy. We're going to be buddies. We're going to be pals. We're going to wrestle the rock. Because I'm. Thank you. 
That's, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, Tato didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. Let's rewind that. Yes, folks, we are supposed. There's audio to this video. If you don't hear it, try changing your audio settings. I think for some people, it's coming out of one ear. For some people, like me, I hear it perfect. If you have AirPods, try putting in wired headphones or just listening to your computer. There is audio, folks. I have heard this comment too. Some folks can hear on their phone, but not on their computer. I don't, some folks can hear on the computer. All right, I'm gonna stop. Um, I'm gonna stop explaining this. Sorry. <laughs> So a couple of notes here. First of all, I think it's, you know, for the first trip, Siegfriedo did not want to tell Lewis that they were going down to kill him. He didn't tell him that. He told him initially they were going to rob someone. And then on the ride, he tells him they're going to kill someone. And secondly, Tatu just said he brought a gun too because he was worried that Siegfriedo might shoot him afterwards. So while these guys are best friends, since you know being kids very early on they uh 
they kind of didn't trust each other a hundred percent.
By the way, if that voice sounds familiar, this gentleman in the uh, green shirt, that is Special Agent Patrick Sanford, who is such a key part in all of this. Because I'm going to bunk with you, buddy. We're going to be buddies. We're gonna be buddies. Joanne gifting out five memberships. Welcome to all the new members. As always, Joanne, so generous. Thank you so, so much, Joanne. It's pretty remarkable, by the way. Remember, they're from Miami. They're going to Tallahassee. Uh, and Sigfredo, not this gentleman, not Tato, Tuto, knew exactly where Dan's house was. Didn't need a GPS. Quickly looked at a map. He clearly had been studying this for a while.
So again, the first trip they go down, they're they're pretty much partying, they're 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 staking it out, and ultimately Luis Rivero here, Tato, says, Hey man, this ain't worth it. We shouldn't kill this guy. And he convinces Tuto, Sigfredo uh, Rivera, to go back to Miami. So they go back. And then and by the way, if you didn't know that Jeff Lacasse, the first trip, was also leaving town was also going away, just like he goes away the second trip. They were trying to set him up to be to look like he's the jealous boyfriend who did this. Um, that's why they also rented this, the car that looked just like Jeff's. And then, so then, after Tato convinces Tuto to go back in June, if you just heard what uh, Tato says, Katie is, like, convincing them that they have to go back and where do you think that she's getting this information that they have to go back from the Adelsons and if you don't think Wendy was involved in this I got something to tell you and it's just a question of what do they have
because I'm going to bunk with you, buddy. We're going to be buddies. We're going to be pals. We're going to wrestle around. <laughs> I'm a unicorn signing up to the bows. Thank you so much, Ima. Thank you so much for joining. Capri, get the Capri Suns out. Thank you so much, Ima. Because I'm going to bunk with you, buddy. We're going to be buddies. We're going to be pals. We're going to wrestle around. Andrea also joining. Thank you so much, Andrea, as always, for your support. Thank you guys both so much for signing up. Really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's check. We are... One subscriber away from 7K. Squadoosh, 7K, folks. We have hit 7K. It'll probably go down because it goes by tens. But for right now, if you look at that screen, we are at 7,000. Thank you so much, everyone. You guys are amazing. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your support. Let's hit them with an RBI baseball, Nintendo, NES, home run sound. Thank you so much, everybody. Also, let's hit him with this one. Fuck your life! Bing bong! All right, folks, here we go. Katie, like, that's a good question by Sanford. How, why is Katie messing with Siegfredo's head? And here we go. Imagine you're the, the, um, you're the pe special agent Sanford and you're Detective Isom, and all of a sudden he brings up the dentist, and they're like, what? Who's the dentist? 
Here we go. So yeah, if you hear that, that's Lewis talking about how one day after work, Sigfredo takes Lewis outside of a restaurant, unknown to, to Lewis. He's like, where are we going? And they're outside of a restaurant. And at that restaurant, Charlie Adelson is having dinner with Katie Magbanoa. And Sigfredo is like, um, I'm going to drive into this freaking restaurant because she's cheating on me. And Lewis is like, I will get out of the fucking car right now. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Get over it. I'm going to assume when Tato rents the car, he doesn't do what I do and then check my like, well, if I have this credit card, do I get a discount with this company? Or I wonder if my job has a discount with this rental. I'm assuming that Tato doesn't check for any discount codes before he rents a car.
fuck your life, bing bong. Holy shit, Miss Lisa coming in hot from the future in Australia. Miss Lisa from the future giving out 20 memberships. Thank you so much, Miss Lisa. You are the best. I'm going to bunk with you, buddy. We're going to be buddies. We're going to be pals. We're going to wrestle around. 20 memberships. Thank you so much, Lisa. You are awesome. Welcome to all the new members. Get out the Capri Suns. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Auntie Lisa coming in, joining the bows. Thank you so much, Auntie Lisa. Um, I'm with you, Miss Wee Lassie, who says, in my opinion, Lewis was one of the most genuine, honest people who took stand in the trial. I agree. Uh, and by the way, folks, um, it's interesting, right, that months after the murder, Sigfredo Garcia is getting a new apartment and a new TV. And Lewis is like, uh, where are you getting this money from, man?
Uh, Tasha, you don't have to apologize for questions. We, we love to help for folks who have any questions. So if you have any questions about what's going on, we'll do our best to answer you. Uh, and for folks who haven't heard the story about uh, what happens the second trip, um, this is the uh, Wet Bandits part. Or was it the first trip? I forget. Well, just wait till you hear what, what happens inside the car, uh, which is very Wet Bandits-like. Man, Tato did not want to do this. He gets the ticket and he tells him, that's a sign, let's get out of here. And Tuto's like, nah, fuck this. And it kind of makes sense where he was talking about the cocaine and he was like, I don't want to get freebies from, from like, I don't want to get hand-me-downs, essentially, <laughs> of cocaine from Tato. Like, Lewis wanted to get this. Lewis wanted, not Lewis, I'm sorry, Sigfredo wanted to do this. He wanted that money. He needed that money.
All right, folks, here's the wet bandits part of the story. You're not going to, if you haven't heard this part, you're not going to believe it. So if you missed that, Sigfredo is playing around with the gun in the rental car. He shoots a hole in the floor that goes through the gas line. And then they have to go and like go to AutoZone and get part, you know, a new gas line to fix the freaking car on their <laughs> on their ride. Like these freaking it's the wet bandits. And by the way, that's one of the way they corroborated the story is they ended up finding the car and they look at the gas line, and it was a new gas line. I think th the car was turned into, I know, it was turned into like a triple A uh, car that like helped help people on the road. They find it later on, they check the bottom of it, and sure enough, it has a new gas line, because these jabronis shot through the floor. He was just fucking with the gun, shoots through the floor, shoots the gas line. The guy's name is Chadrick Nobles, and let me tell you, he's a he's a character. He's in the first trial, uh, and his testimony is interesting. And just a reminder, folks, this happened, the murder happened July, the shooting happened July 18, 2014. This is now October 2016. They didn't have it. Like, so this is all like, they were, tr the police are trying to figure out, they can't figure out what happened. And now, now they're hearing this story and it's like, must be blowing their minds.
on a, on a separate note, if if I had shot, a, if I was going on a hit, I shoot the car. My buddy shoots the car. The line is is busted. Um, and he fixes it. And then the next day we're gonna do the hit. The anxiety I would have that the that the line would break on the way to the hit or on the with uh, particularly on the way home after the hit that the guy didn't do a good enough job with the line. Uh, my anxiety would be, I mean, my anxiety would be through the roof anyway. But can you imagine? They got to get out of there. They're going to do the murder now, and they got to get out of there, and the, the gas line is busted, and they had to change it? And here's some more wet bandage shit. Tato here sees an owl outside and decides to take a picture of it and post it to the gram. He takes a picture of a fucking owl and posts it to the gram. Some more wet bandage stuff.
Just wait until you see this picture in the trial. It is something else.
Yes, as um, Judy is saying, how did Katie know? How did Katie already know? How did Katie already know? Perhaps a WhatsApp call from Wendy? I don't know. How did Katie already know that the job was done?
So first of all, easy to count because they were stapled. Uh, who staples their money? Charlie Adelson. But you know why? At this point, you would think he would say if it was wet or damp or uh, like he would probably say that right now. That would be something he would bring up. So it's interesting. Was some of the money wet and some of it not? Because he would very clearly bring that up if right now, if that was the case for the money that he particularly got. And by the way, what an absolutely idiotic thing. How absolutely dumb can you be to staple money in a, in a, to give, like, how could you, why not just put, a, why don't you put the t Charlie Adelson dumb face stamp on the money to staple the money? How stupid can you be to staple the money? Might as well put the Adelson Institute stamp on it. Put, why don't you, you each $1,000 bill should be a rubber band with the Adelson Institute calling card with their business card. I mean, how stupid can you be? Damn, he was paying $20 for a haircut back in 2014. I was pissed this year when my Turkish barbers upped it to $20. I had been paying like $12, maybe $14. And he's paying $20 back then? <laughs> you, you could keep the map guys wait till you see this drawing it's the greatest you guys can keep it that's for you for the folks that probably missed I did a rant once a rant once about my Turkish barbers. They they take fire to my ear. They one day they threaded my head and it hurt so bad.
Uh, I forget. Does Katie say the money was damp or moldy? For some reason, I thought she said it was moldy, and that would corroborate one of the persons who people who commented on my videos who said possibly Donna washed the money for the first trip because she tried to launder it, and it was moldy because she never dried it, and then they gave the money during the second trip. But that's just um, mold, right? So mold would make sense if on the first trip she tries to wash the money and then, you know, the job doesn't get done. So she never like dries it, just throws it in the bag or whatever. And then they, they use that same money for the trip on the second trip. So whoever, I forget who commented on my video that that would make a lot of sense if she laundered the money by washing it the first trip and then the same money for the second trip, which was like a month. It was about, it was, uh, a month and 10 days later in that range just just an idea um any hoozle all I mean, this is really interesting question, questioning because it makes a lot of sense. How would he know how to get there if he didn't have a map? He just had the address. He had to have studied that shit for a while to know exactly where to go, right? I mean, he didn't use GPS. He didn't use Google Maps. How did he just have an address and know where to go from somewhere completely foreign from where he's ever been before? I mean, or did he make another trip down there that that Tato was not aware of? Had he already scoped it down and Tato didn't know?
All right, folks, that is the end of the police interview. So let's go to day one. Now, just a reminder, whoops, this is day one from the first trial. This is October 1st, 2019. Um, And now Tato is going to testify. Um. And just take a step back, everyone. Just take a step back as far as that interview, which was two th- 2016. Remember that the the murder happens in 2014, and no one can figure out what happened. And then they start. They find out about the car, and then they find out about Lewis. But remember, in Tallahassee, people don't know what's happened. They're like they have no idea what happened. And then all of a sudden, they find out. These guys drove from Miami. These people are from Mi- Miami. Like, what? What's going on? And then all of a sudden, they released the PCA, and now all of a sudden, the uh, the a- the Adelsons are part of the conspiracy. Like, I know we're all uh, most of us are like aware of this now, but like back then, it's it's just a while. Like, no one knew what was going on, and now this is all unfolded, and it's just all right. So hopefully, all the folks who couldn't hear the um police interview should be able to hear this this is a regular uh testimony again this is october 1st 2019 this is from the first trial of katie magbanawa and uh sigfredo garcia thank you all so much for being here i appreciate it very much thanks mods for everything you do always uh hit that like if you haven't already and folks we went over we went over 7k today if you can believe that. So thank you all so much for your support. Greatly appreciated. Have a seat. Charlie was never interrogated, Patricia. Dr. Doklet says, hey, Suzanne, I believe Tato, all of his statements about seeing Wendy the day before the hit on um, Danny. Uh, Veronica says Tato has no reason to lie. Thanks, guys. All right, here we go. Microphone, please, sir. I'll put on closed captioning, too. You may proceed, Ms. Kaplan. <coughs> sir, please say your name and spell your name. Louis Rivera. Slide, slide forward a little closer to that microphone, please, sir. Louis Rivera. L I U S R I V E R A. Okay, you got to tell me, Kevin. How old are you, Mr. Rivera? 36. Are you currently incarcerated? Yes, ma'am. And where are you currently incarcerated? Right now I'm in the feds. With the feds? Federal prison. Okay. And are you serving a sentence currently for both this case and an unrelated federal case? Yes, ma'am. And what did you plead to in this case that we're here about today? 19 years. All right, but what charge did you plead to? Uh, Second degree murder. All right, 19 years in prison? Yes, ma'am. And you're serving that concurrent with your federal sentence? Yes, ma'am. How long is the federal sentence? 12 and a half. All right. And what did you have to do in exchange for your 19-year sentence in this case? Cooperate. All right. Yeah, I don't know. There's somebody tamper with the body. Every time we move this thing, it pops up. We need to not move. And Mr. Rivera, if you could pull up just a little bit closer. I mean, I've been having fun with some of the other witnesses. Yes, sir. Go ahead and say something more. All right, Mr. Rivera, you said that you had to cooperate in exchange for the testimony. Yes, ma'am. All right, and what does cooperate mean to you? Say nothing but the truth. Has anybody told you what to say? No, ma'am. Anybody try to tell you what the truth is? No, ma'am. Anybody try to tell you any particular fact you need to include in your testimony in order to get? Not at all. Okay, in order to get anything? No, ma'am. Any benefit? No, ma'am. Did I ever have any private meetings with you before you decided to cooperate with law enforcement? Not at all. (laughs) Did you have an attorney to represent you through the process where you cooperated and entered a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. 
Did your lawyers ever tell you what you needed to say to get a deal? No, ma'am. Were you ever told that you had to implicate a specific person in order to get cooperation in this case? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than what we just discussed, the 19 years concurrent with the federal sentence? No, ma'am. Have you been promised anything on your federal case in exchange for your testimony here today? Not at all. Were you already serving a sentence on the federal case when law enforcement first came to talk to you about this case? Yes, ma'am. And you also have pending violations of probation out of Miami, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. For possession of a firearm by a convicted felon? Yes, ma'am. So you have not yet been sentenced on that? Not at all. And is that up to a potential 15 additional years in prison? I believe so. And also a possession of cocaine with intent to sell, do you have that open as well? Yes, ma'am. And is that in another additional 15 years of prison that you could potentially face once you're done with all of this? Probably. All right. And have you been promised anything in reference to those other charges out of Miami? Not at all. Where were you living back in 2014? I was in Miami. I was living with Jessica. All right. And was Jessica at 135th Street? 135th Street yes, in North Miami. Yes, ma'am. That sound right? Do you know Sigfredo Garcia? Yes, ma'am. How do you know Sigfredo Garcia? Childhood. We grew up together. And when you say that, was it like since you were what age? Uh, like five, six, around there. Okay. Were your families close to each other? Uh, they know each other. Did you grow up in the same neighborhood? Yes, ma'am. Go to the same schools? Yes, ma'am. Run with the same crowd? Yes, ma'am. Does Mr. Garcia have any nicknames? Just Tuto. Tuto? What, have you ever heard the term Tuto Dade? Tuto Dade? Yeah. Nah. What about, um, let me ask you, like back around the time that this crime occurred 2014 how often did you hang out with mr garcia during that time frame no, we hang out pretty close every day all right and you mentioned a jessica who's that that's my ex baby mama well, my ex, baby mama. she's the mother of your children yes ma'am all right and that's who you were living with around the time of this homicide yes ma'am what about Kath by the way you'll notice with lewis for those who have not seen him testify he just looks you straight in the eye and tells you the truth. He's not doing any sort of tilting his head. He's not batting his eyes. He is looking you straight in the face, looking Georgia, whoever he's talking to, straight in the face, and just very clearly telling the truth, in my opinion. Catherine Magbanawa, do you know her? Yes, ma'am. How do you know her? Garcia's wife. All right, and is he legally married to her? That I knew, yeah. You I thought mean, he was? Yeah, I thought he was. Okay, and did, do they have children together? Yes, ma'am. All right, and does she go by any nicknames? Just Katie. Katie? Yeah, we just call her Katie. All right, and was Catherine Magbano was somebody around, and I'm referring to the time leading up to this homicide, say six months leading up to the homicide. Is that somebody that you would talk to on the phone? No, Catherine I, Magbano? Like speak to her? Yes. No. Would you see her socially? I see her because I got I got to see Aunt Garcia. So when you saw her, would she always be with Garcia, or did you have a separate relationship with her? No, she would be with Garcia. I never had no. Okay, I guess I'm just trying to establish: Did you have a friendship with her independent of knowing Garcia, or was she just Garcia's woman to you? That was Garcia's woman. Okay. How much time would you say you spent around the two of them socially, them like as a couple? I mean, I was always around Garcia, but, you know, everybody do their own thing. Okay. Did you, would you say you saw them socially more than 10 times in your life? Yeah, of course. Uh, was the nature of... Magbanoa and Garcia's relationship such that they were always together, steady, or did they tend to break up and get back together? They're on and off. Do you know what their status was of their relationship at the time that Dan Markell was killed? I don't think I knew that she was dating um, 
the dentist. That's about it. You did not know she was dating the dentist? No, she did? was dating. You did? Dating. Okay, so they were kind of off at that time. Yeah, they were off. I want to show you some photographs, which I've marked as states 45 and 46. Ask if you recognize them. Yes, ma'am. How do you recognize states 45 and 46? I think we were going out to the club that day. Are these photographs? Yes, ma'am. Who are they photographs of? Let's start with 45. This one. Me, Jessica, Luther, and Katie. All right. And are these fair and accurate photographs of the four of you? No. Yeah. Is this a photograph taken um, when the four of y'all were hanging out socially? Yeah. Okay. Judge, at this time, I'd ask to introduce an evidence case exhibit 45. Any objection? None from the defense. None from Garcia, Judge. All right. It'll be admitted. Uh, only objection, Judge, is there's no time frame that's been established for that photograph. Do you, do you have an idea when these were taken, Mr. Rivera? You know do you have any time photos? idea oh. of when these photos were shown? I, I can't remember. I can't remember. Sometime prior to the homicide that we're here about? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. No, I don't think so. You think it could have been after? Probably after. Okay. No. Objection. I'll just rest my objection on that, Your Honor. He says he probably he doesn't know when that picture was right. I'll overrule the objection. Admit States Exhibit 45. And States Exhibit 46. What is that a photo of? Me and Garcia. All right. And do you know when that photo was taken? <coughs> no, nah, not really. Okay. Is that the two of y'all hanging out together socially? Yes, ma'am. All right. And are the two of you? <coughs> I guess if you know, what is your height? What is your height and Mr. Garcia's height? I'm 5'4". He's like 6'1". You're 5'4 and he's 6'1"? Yes, ma'am. And is that demonstrated in that photo? Yeah. Is that fair enough? Thank you, Nan, for saying this because I thought this was true, but I wasn't positive. In one of the trials, they stipulate that that Wendy did, that when um, Tato refers to seeing Wendy walking down the street, the prosecution and defense stipulate that it was not, in fact, her walking down the street. Thank you, thank you. I, I thought that was true. I thought that was confirmed, but I wasn't sure. So he was wrong. He did not see Wendy walking down the street because the defense and the prosecution stipulated. They agreed um, it wasn't her. She must have had an alibi or something. I don't know what the, what the deal is. Of course. He's just um, leaning down a little bit, but he's tall. All right. Judge, at this time, I'd ask to introduce an evidence states 46. Any objection? Yes, Judge. He indicated he wasn't sure when that photograph was taken. He also indicated... Uh, you have a legal objection. State your legal objection, please. Can't authenticate All right. I'll overrule the objection. Admit states exhibit 46. You may. Garcia, mm -hmm. Katie, mm -hmm. yes ma'am, Jessica, Jessica Rivera, no Rodriguez, no Rodriguez, I'm sorry, but that's your child's mother, yes ma'am, this person, me, this is it, 46, who's that, that's me and Garcia, you Was there a time when Mr. Garcia approached you about coming to Tallahassee? Yes, ma'am. And when was that? 2014. Okay. Do you know how long before the homicide it was that Mr. Garcia first approached you about coming to Tallahassee? A few months. All right. And what did Mr. Garcia say when he approached you about coming to Tallahassee? He just said, um, I got a job. He gave me a job I got to go do. He said he had a job? Yes, ma'am. And the job was in Tallahassee? Yes, ma'am. And did he ask you to come with him? Yes, ma'am. 
did you ask any questions about what the nature of the job was, why you needed to go all the way to Tallahassee, or anything like that? No, ma'am. Why not? Uh, just as my best friend, I trust him. So you were automatically in to do whatever it was he wanted you to do? Whatever you wanted to do over the road. All right. Was money discussed as far as how you'd be compensated for this job? Yeah. Tell us about that. Um, he was going to give me some money. He said, take a ride with me over to uh, Tallahassee, and um, I'll give you some money. Did he say how much? At that moment, yeah, he did. Thirty-five. All right. Thirty-five what? Thirty-five thousand. You were going to get $35,000 for this job? Yes, ma'am. All right. And <clears throat> did you have another conversation in the car on the way to Tallahassee? Yes, ma'am. How many trips did you make to Tallahassee? Like tw twice. All right. And were both trips with Mr. Garcia? Yes, ma'am. Was anybody else in the car on either of those trips? Not at all. All right. Tell us about the conversation on the way to Tallahassee. Was this the first trip or the second trip? This is um, the first trip. All right, tell us about that. He was just taking a ride up there. <clears throat> My concern, I thought we were going to go rob him. So. Say that again? And My concern, I thought we were going to go rob him. You thought you were coming to Tallahassee to do a robbery? Yes, ma'am. Did you assume that, or did somebody tell you that? No, I assumed that. I'm like, you know, it was just a job. All right. So you knew it was a job in Tallahassee, and you assumed it was a robbery. Did you learn something additional about what it was on the way to Tallahassee? Yeah, in the way coming up. Like halfway there, we just, he said we're going to have to um, kill the man. You said kids. you were going to have to kill the man? Yeah. And what was the second part of what you said? For some kids. For some kids. All right. Anything else? What did that mean to you, kill the man for some kids? That's for a lady. Um, I guess the lady wanted her kids back. All right. So is this Garcia telling you this? Yeah. Did he have any information about who it was you were coming to Tallahassee to kill? If he had information for who we're coming to kill? Yeah. Yeah. What information did he have? He had a piece of paper. And where was the piece of paper? He had it in his hand at that moment. Okay. Did you see the piece of paper? Did you see what was on it? Yes, ma'am. What was on it? A picture of the the guy on... What's his name? Dan Markell? Dan Markell. The guy that y'all ended up killing. Yes, ma'am. That's the leading judge. Overruled. Is that the person whose picture was on the paper? Yes, ma'am. All right. And was there anything else on the paper other than a picture of Mr. Markell? I think it was the address in it, too. Okay. And who was doing the driving on this first trip? He was. Okay. And during the time that he showed you this paper, was he behind the wheel of the car? Yes, ma'am. All right. And do you know where the paper was stored inside the car? It was on the side of um, where you drive it by the door. Okay. Who was responsible for getting the car to go on the first trip? He did. Mr. Garcia? Yeah, he brought the car. All right. So you didn't, or did you, accompany him to rent the car for the first trip? No, ma'am. Do you know what your phone number was at the time of this homicide? I think it was like seven, either 786, I think it was like 290. Can no, I mean, your phone number. My phone number? Yeah. Shit. And I had two phones. Um, if I say the phone number, would you be able to say that was correct or not? Let me hear it, please. Uh, 305-570. 8153. Yeah. That was one of your phone that numbers? That was one of my phone numbers. And then I also have a 305 934 6615. Was that a phone number that belonged to you? Yeah. Okay. And was there one number in particular that, of those two that you took to Tallahassee? I don't remember which one I took. Did you definitely take one of them to Tallahassee? Yeah, yes ma'am. Okay. I want to ask you about the uh, first trip. Um, do you know the date that you came to Tallahassee on the first trip? The date? I can't remember, but um, no, I can't remember. Okay. Does June 4th through June 5th sound correct? Yeah, it was around June. 
Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, and that's of the year 2014, right? Yes, ma'am. All right, so do you know, are you familiar with a ticket, a traffic ticket that y'all got in the area of Gainesville on that first trip? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm going to show you what I've marked as States Exhibit 81. You recognize States 81? Yes, ma'am. Is that a fair and accurate copy of the traffic ticket that y'all received on this first trip to Tallahassee? Yes, ma'am. All right, and this was in the car that was rented by Mr. Garcia? Yes, ma'am. Who got the ticket? I got the ticket. All right. Judge, at this time, I'd ask to introduce an evidence to 81. Any objection? No, not at all, Judge. Not Mr. Garcia. No objection. Be admitted. What was the ticket for? Uh, speeding. Okay. And so you were doing the driving, at least in the Gainesville area, is that right? Yeah, we had to switch for a minute, and you told me to drive. Do you know what time of day you arrived in Tallahassee on that first trip on June 4th? In the morning, like around 5, 6 o'clock in the morning around there. Okay. And would it refresh your memory of the traffic ticket was received? Let me see. <coughs> I'm going to draw your attention to the top right corner of this traffic ticket indicates that you received a ticket at 9 12 a.m. in Gainesville, Florida. Does that sound right? Yeah. It does? When you came to Tallahassee that first time, did you have any guns with you? Yes, ma'am. And what guns were in the car with you on that first trip? We had two guns, okay. two 38s. Two 38s? Yes, ma'am. And where where did those guns come from? One was his and one was mine. One was whose? Garcia's. All right, and was that a gun that he acquired just for this trip or something he'd already had? He already had. All right, what about the gun that was yours? I bought it. Where did you buy it? In the corner. On the corner, so it was an, an illegal gun purchase? Yes, ma'am. And was which one of these guns, if either of them, ended up being the murder weapon in this case? The one that I brought. All right, the one that you purchased on the corner? Yes, ma'am. And that was before the first trip to Tallahassee? That was the first trip. All right, so what was the purpose of the first trip? We came on to scope them out. Okay, were you intending to commit the murder on the first trip? It was supposed to, but um, we couldn't find them. All right, so when y'all came to do the first trip, was any money exchanged? No, he had money. Who did? Garcia. How much money did he have? He probably had, I think, from two grand or five grand. Between two and five grand? Yeah. Okay, and did you know where he got the money from? The money got it from the people that hired him. All right, and who were that? Who was that? Did he tell you? No, he didn't tell me yet. Okay. Did he give you any money on this first trip? Excuse me. Did he give you any money for this yeah, first he gave trip? A couple of hundred dollars. Okay. How many nights did you stay in Tallahassee on that first trip? Hmm. If you remember. I say like two nights. All right. Two or three nights. Did you, where did y'all stay? In a hotel. Okay. And did you interact with a man by the name of Shadrick Nobles in the hotel? Yes, ma'am. And you said that you came here to do the murder, but you couldn't find him. What did you mean by that? Uh, we have followed him. and we um, Followed we who? Mark Hill. All right. Where did you follow him to? I followed him <laughs> all the way to a daycare where we kept losing him. Okay. Where did you follow him? When you say you followed him to the daycare, where did you start following him? Like, uh, we had stopped by a park and watched him come out of his house. So you <clears throat> knew where his house was located? 
Yes, ma'am. How did you know where Mr. Markell's house was? Garcia pointed us out to me. Okay. Was that something that was written on the paper? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you said you pulled into a park and waited for him. Where was the park? I was in the corner by a light. Mr. Markell to 47. Yep. And when you, had you already seen Mr. Uh, Markell's home before you parked here? Yes, ma'am. Right. And when he pulled out, did he pull out down this road right here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, when you're talking about the light, are you talking about this intersection? Yes. All right, tell me where you followed him. If he came down this way, where did y'all go? Pulled right behind him, and he went straight. Yes, ma'am. And is that when you followed him to the area of the daycare? Yes, ma'am. All right. And when you say you lost him, where where, and how did you lose him? Uh, he had pulled him into the daycare. We just, by the time we made a circle, I guess he had pulled down and left. So we kept losing him. All right. And when you talk about following Mr. Markell to the daycare on this first trip, who was driving when you all followed him to the daycare? Garcia. All right. Did y'all, you mentioned going by Mr. Markell's residence. Can you tell the jury exactly what kind of scoping out y'all did of Mr. Markell's residence on this trip? Just driving through to see if we see his car, to see if there's somebody on the house, but we never got to see his car. Did you ever pull around behind the, the house or go anywhere besides other than driving right in front? Yeah, we went around the house. Right. Did you get out of the car? No, ma'am. Did Mr. Garcia get out of the car? Yes, ma'am. Tell us about that. He got off, went behind the house, tried to see if somebody was in the house. <clears throat> Who was supposed to be the shooter on this first trip? I was going to be the shooter. Did you make a suggestion to change the plan from shooting to something else? Yeah, I found out for the kids. I ain't going to shoot nobody for no kids. All right. Did When you saw Mr. Markell on the first trip, did he have his kids with him? Yes, ma'am. All right. Why didn't the murder get done on the first trip? Is it because? We lost him. Okay. Did you ever observe Mr. Markell on the first trip where he was, I guess, separated from his children? Excuse me? Did you ever see him where he was in his car or in his home and the kids were not around that first trip? No, he always had his kids. Oh, shit, just got a $10 uh, PayPal from Joanne. Joanne, you are the best. Thank you so much, Joanne, for the for the uh, for the PayPal. Thank you, thank you. Did y'all discuss plans to, you know, yes, y'all went back to Miami, correct? After yes, the failed first trip, and did was there any plans discussed about when to come back? No, ma'am. All right. What about between the two trips? Was there a conversation about the homicide or coming back to Tallahassee? Excuse me, what two trips? The two trips? Between the two trips. Did y'all talk about when you're going to come back or? No, when we left that first night, we left. We didn't talk about it. You did or did not? Did not. Okay. What, how did it come about that y'all came back? He ended up calling me. He said, you got to do the job. We got to finish that job. Okay. And did y'all return to Tallahassee on July 16th, 2014? Yes, ma'am. And how did you get to Tallahassee that time? We rented a car. Who rented the car? I did. All right. I'm going to show you what's been introduced into evidence as States 82. Have you seen this exhibit before? Yes, ma'am. Is this the rental agreement that you, where you rented this car? Yes, ma'am. Oh, shit. Mike on the kick machine gifting out a sub to Todd on the kick machine. 
Mike, you're awesome. Thank you so much, Mike. Really appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. I can't remember. Who went with you to rent the Prius? Well, it was me and Garcia. He waited for me in the corner. I went in, um, gave him $300, and rented a car. Okay. Did you refer to Mr. Garcia as your brother? Yeah, always. Who drove to Tallahassee in the green Prius? I did. Where did y'all stay in Tallahassee on the second trip? Same hotel. Okay, I'm going to show you what I've marked as State Exhibit 83. Recognize States 83? Yes, ma'am. All right, is that the receipt from, I think this one is, it shows an arrival date of July 16th. Is that your information? Yes, ma'am. Is that a fair and accurate copy of what you filled out to register in the hotel here in Tallahassee? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Judge, at this time, I'd ask to move into evidence States Exhibit 83, which is accompanied by a uh, certification or declaration of authenticity by the folks at the Budget Inn. Budget Inn? Is yes, that sir. Is there objection? Yeah, just to confirm, this is on the July 16th, 2014. That's the, this one, correct? Correct. Okay, no objection from Mr. Garcia. No objection. Be admitted. Okay. You may. Yes, ma'am. What is your name and address? So forth? Yes, ma'am. What about this phone number? There's another phone number on here. You know who that belongs to? Is that a real phone number? I don't think so. You don't think so? It's not a real phone number at all. I want to talk about Thursday, July 17th. So you came, you spent the night at the Budget Inn, you woke up on Thursday, July 17th. What happened that day? Woke up, um, took a ride towards my girl's house it's that Thursday morning. And um, we went around the house. So we went around the house, we came back around, and uh, we seen a lady walking through. Mm -hmm. Where was the lady? She was towards. She was towards my right hand side, towards his house. Markel's towards house. whose house? Towards Markel's house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was she in the street, on the sidewalk, or sidewalk. something else? Okay. Did she have children with her? Yes, ma'am. Two. All right. What happened when you saw this lady? Did she see you? Yeah, she looked dead at the car. I was driving, and um, as I looked in my rear mirror, I seen her looking. Mm-hmm. So what I. What happened next? I asked Garcia, what's up with this lady? Why she looking at the car? I like, asked that lady with the kids, man. So you asked Garcia, hey, who's this lady that's looking at the car? Yes, ma'am. And he said, that's the lady with the kids. Yes, ma'am. And what did you take that to mean? That's the lady that wanted the kids. The, the lady that wanted you to do this job? Yes, ma'am. All right. And were you worried about seeing her there? Yes, ma'am. Were you worried about her seeing you there? Of course. Um, were you concerned? Did you ever ask Garcia, who knows that I'm involved in this job with you? I can't remember. Can't remember that? No. Okay. What did you do once you see this lady and Garcia tells you that's the lady that wants this job done? We, we drove off. We left. Okay. Did Garcia make a phone call about seeing the lady? Well, I'm looking to review a mirror, and I seen her making a phone call. I seen okay. her getting on the phone. The lady that you saw on the sidewalk. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then y'all drove off. 
Me yo voy. Okay. And did Mr. Garcia, after seeing that and driving off, did he make any phone calls? After we don't bend like the corner, mm -hmm. he got on the phone. All right. And who did he get on the phone with? I believe he got on the phone with Katie. How do you know it was Katie he got on the phone with? Because she, like, the way he was talking, it's only okay. her. He, don't, he only talks to her. All right. And what do you mean the way he was talking? How are you able to tell? Like, um, when he spoke to her, she like, yeah, um, y'all get out of there. The lady just seen y'all. All right. And so y'all were worried about this lady having seen you? Oh, I was worried. You were? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And were you able, you said that you believe Garcia called Katie. Could you actually hear her or you could only hear his end of the conversation? I'm hearing his end of the conversation right now. All right. And tell us about his end of the conversation. What did you hear? He like, we just got to go. Like, let's get out of here. Okay. Did you learn anything about Mr. Markell planning to leave town? Yes. That Tell us about that. We had to get the job done because he was supposed to leave that Friday morning. How did you know that? Garcia told him. And how did he know that? Katie told him. And when Katie told him that, was that something that happened while you were present or something that he already knew before y'all arrived there? No, I was present. I was in the car. Okay. How would they have that information? without Wendy. Did you post a picture on Instagram while y'all were in Tallahassee on that second trip? Yes, ma'am. Could you tell the jury about that? It was a picture of an owl. An owl, like the bird? Yeah. Okay. And was that a photograph that you took here in Tallahassee? Yes, ma'am. All right. What happened after you posted this picture of an owl on Instagram? Garcia came and told me, hey, you need to take that shit down. Just like that. Garcia told you that? Yes, ma'am. And who told him that? I believe Katie. You believe Katie or no, you know Katie? It's, it's Katie. It's her. Okay. So did Garcia get a phone call about the Instagram photo that you posted? Yes, ma'am. And were you present when he received that phone call? I was outside. Okay. He came outside and told me. He came outside and told you to take it down? Yeah. All right. And did you all have contact with that same gentleman that y'all saw the first trip, Shadrick Nobles? Did y'all see him on the second trip? Yes, ma'am. All right. Could you tell the jury about the circumstances of coming into contact with Mr. Nobles on the second trip? Buying drugs. All right. And was there an issue with your car as well? Yes, ma'am. Could you tell the jury about the issue with the car? There was an issue in the car at home. I was driving, and Garcia pulled a gun out and shot a hole right through the car. All right, what gun did he shoot the car with? Oh, uh, the, the homicide one. The, 38. The, the murder weapon. The murder weapon. The gun that you bought on the street corner. Yes, ma'am. All right, and I assume that was an accidental shooting of the car? Yeah, it was an accident. Where did this occur? Were you all in the parking lot or somewhere else? I was driving. All right, did it disable the vehicle? Of course. All right, so what did y'all do as a result of the vehicle being disabled? And this is the green Prius, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead and tell us what y'all did. Well, the car had stopped because he had the gas line. So um, pushed it right to the, to the side of the road, so like a little parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, he left with Cedric to the um, auto zone and got a little piece of hose to come fix it up. It only took him like about 10 minutes to fix it. So Garcia got a ride with Mr. Nobles? Yes, ma'am. All right, and we're, who fixed the car? Garcia. All right, was he able to do that with whatever he bought at the auto parts store? Of course. And then it ran again after that? Yes, ma'am. And did Mr. Nobles assist y'all with getting a hotel room that second night in Tallahassee? Yes. All right, I want to talk about what happened on July 18th, 2014. Who was driving the green Prius that day? I was. Where did y'all go when you left the hotel? To Markel's house. All right. And was Mr. Markel, was his vehicle there? That's that Friday. Yes, sir. His vehicle, we had pulled, but um, we passed by. We didn't see it, so we went to the corner, the same spot of that park. We pulled it up and um, waited for him to come around. So once I seen him, we follow him. Where did you follow him? All the way to the daycare. All right. 
And did you see him drop his children off at the daycare? Yes, ma'am. And did you continue to follow him? Yes, ma'am. Where did you follow him from the daycare? To the gym. All right. And are you still driving at this point? I'm still driving. And Mr. Garcia is the passenger? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did you continue to use your cell phones once you got into the area of Premier Gym? No, I think the cell phone was off. I think. I can't remember. Okay. You don't remember whether you turned your phone off or not? Yeah, I can't remember if it was on or off. Okay. Have you seen the Premier Gym video? I've seen the gym. And you saw the images of that green Prius circling around while Mr. Markell was working out in the gym? Yeah. And was that you in that vehicle? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Garcia? Yes, ma'am. What happened once uh, Mr. Markell came out of the gym? We followed him all the way back to his house. And have you seen the images that were on the bus? bus cameras? Have I seen the images? Yeah, the video from the bus cameras. Yeah, I've seen them. All right. And is that y'all b both before and right after the murder of Mr. Markell? Yes, ma'am. All right. Did, on the way to the murder, I see only your car, the Prius, turning onto Benton Road. I do not see Mr. Markell's. Why is that? We went the other, he, um, he went one way and went the other way. And what do you mean by that? He turned before you or after you? He turned before me. Okay. So he turned to get to his house another way, and you turned on Benton. Yes, the corner of his house. Okay. That corner right there by the park? Yes, ma'am. All right. And so when you were approaching Mr. Markell's residence, was he coming from the other direction? Yes, ma'am. What happened once the two of y'all were headed toward each other? He pulled in, and I, I pulled right, right behind him. How close did you get up behind him? Real close. <laughs> All right. And what was Mr. Markell doing when you pulled up behind him? He was on the phone. All right, still seated in the driver's seat of his vehicle? Yes, ma'am. And what happened once you pulled into his driveway? As soon as I pulled in, Garcia jumped off, jumped out of the car and went around. Not around, but in front of, my, in front of the car. Mm -hmm. Right behind his car and in front of um, the car I was driving. Went to the um, driver's side and shot him. He shot Mr. Markell? Yes, ma'am. How many times? Twice. Did you actually see Mr. Garcia shoot Mr. Markell? Of course. Were the shots close together? Yes, ma'am. Can you describe Mr. Garcia's shooting position, like how he was holding the gun? One hand. All right. Was it raised up, or was it like a normal arm, pretty straight shooting position? A raised up, pretty straight. Okay. And did... Mr. Garcia, did you observe him touch anything in the... Did he have to go inside the garage to kill Mr. Markell? Yes, ma'am. And did you see him touch anything inside the garage? No, ma'am. All right, and when he shot Mr. Markell, can you tell the jury anything about how close the gun was to Mr. Markell? Pretty close. Okay, would you say inches, feet? Just inches away. All right. Did you see Mr. Garcia go inside the house at all? Not at all. Did he take anything from Mr. Nope. Markell other than his life? No, ma'am. What did y'all do once Mr. Garcia shot Mr. Markell? Got in the car and left. And who was driving? Me. All right. Which way did y'all go? The same way we came in. All right. Up Thomasville Road? Just, um, just stay by the corner of the park. Okay, so you turned at the corner by the park. Yeah. And then did you turn at the light? Yes, made a right and just left. All right. Did y'all get on the interstate and head back to Miami? Yes, ma'am. Do you see the person in the courtroom who shot Mr. Markell? Yes, ma'am. Could you please point that person out and describe what he's wearing? Garcia. He's wearing a tux. A tux? Yeah. What color is the shirt? Blue. Let the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant Garcia. On the By the way, he is not in fact wearing a tuxedo. That's just that's just what Tato calls his suit. <laughs> the bus video that we talked about a little earlier, in the moments after the homicide, there's 
some like animated movement that's seen in the passenger side of the Prius. Can you tell us what that what that was, what was happening at that time? Oh, he's just trying to hide the gun. Who was? Garcia. Where was he trying to hide the gun? Right in front of um, the uh, passenger side. Okay. And what was Mr. Garcia's demeanor like? What was he acting like when he got back in the car after killing Mr. Markell? He was nervous. What happened to the murder weapon in this case? We dumped it. Where did y'all dump it? In the lake. All right, what lake? In a bridge, um, in no hotel, in one of the bridges. All right, was it on the way between the Tallahassee way and Miami? Yes, ma'am. And were you able to say exactly which bridge it was? I can't remember. But the gun was thrown into a body of water? Yes, ma'am. And who threw the gun into the body of water? Garcia. Did you ride around with law enforcement much later looking for this location? Yes, ma'am. All right. Have you seen the ATM images in this case? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Who's that? That's me. Who's that? Garcia. What car is it? The Prius. Is the homicide? Yes, ma'am. Sir? Yes, ma'am. What were you doing at the ATM? I was just getting money out. Why did you need to get money out if you got a couple hundred dollars already for the uh, murder? We had ran out. Y'all had run out of money by then? Yeah. Do you know which one of you had the first phone call once the murder occurred, you or Mr. Garcia? Garcia. And do you know when that phone call was made or where y'all were when the I phone was, call was made? I was, was driving back to Miami. All right. And who was the first phone call? Did he receive a phone call or he made a phone call? Shit. I can't remember right now. And who was the fir first phone call with? Katie. All right, so Garcia either called Katie or got a call from Katie, and that yes. was the first call that either of y'all made after the murder? Yes, ma'am. All right, and was how do you know that that call was to Katie? Because he, when he was speaking, he like, hey, the shit is done. She goes, I already know it's done. All right, and when she said, I already know it's done, was that something that you heard or that Garcia told you? I heard how were you able to hear it? Because I'm in the car with him. The All window's right. up, and she's on the phone. So her voice was loud enough through the receiver that you were yes, able to hear her. And could you identify her voice as being hers and not somebody else's? Yes, ma'am. All right, so tell us again what exactly was said. He said, um, we already finished. He goes, I already know it's done. All right, and then what? And then we asked for the money. Like, where the money at? So you'll get it tomorrow. Who said you'll get it tomorrow? Katie. Who was responsible for getting the money? I believe Katie. All right, and you said, why do you say you believe Katie? Was it Katie or not? Yes, it was Katie. All right, and did you know where she was going to get the money from? If I knew, not really, but we know the lady, Wendy, was paying it. All right, so you knew that the job was being done so that Wendy could get her kids? Yes, ma'am. Did you go with Katie to get the money? No, ma'am. All right, and when Katie said you'll get the money, what exactly did she say? I'm not sure you said You'll get the yet. money tomorrow. You'll get the money tomorrow. And was that okay with you? Not really. I mean, the job is done. We should get the money today. All right. Did y'all go back and forth about that a little bit? Not at all. All right. So she's going to get the money and you were going to get it tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. And did you get the money the next day? Yes, ma'am. That's going to be Saturday the 19th? Yes, ma'am. July 19th, 2014? Yes. Your financial records indicate that you went to Big Daddy's the night of the murder. Is that is that a place in Miami? Yes, ma'am. What kind of place is that? Uh, Big Daddy, you got a bar and then you got a Flanagan's right next to it. Okay. Is Flanagan's also a bar or is that something else? It's together. Okay. Yeah, it's a bar. It's a, um, a sport, sport bar. Is that a place that you hung out regularly? Not really. Okay. But you went there that night? Yes, ma'am. And what about Mr. Garcia? Did he go there with you? Yes, ma'am. Did y'all spend some money that night? Yes. Were y'all celebrating? You can't call it celebrating, but we, yeah, we, sp we spent some money. All right, but you hadn't been paid yet. No, not at all. Okay, but you were anticipating getting some money the next day. Yes, ma'am. 
Did you know how much Mr. Garcia was getting paid for his role in this murder? Forty grand. Forty grand, and that's what he told you? Yes, ma'am. Did you know how much Katie was getting for her role in this murder? The rest. The rest of what? The money. How much money was it total? A hundred grand. A hundred grand? Yes, ma'am. That's how much the job was? Yes, ma'am. When did you learn that? My, um, I asked Garcia, he's giving me 35, <coughs> and he's getting 40. I said, how much is in total? He said, 100. Katie, get the rest. All right. So you said that you got paid the next day. Uh, tell us about that. I was in a barbershop the next morning. I get a phone call from Katie. Hey, where's Tuto? Where's Tuto? And Tuto is Mr. Garcia? Yes, ma'am. All right, so Katie, you talked to Katie on the phone that day. Yes, I did. And that was pretty unusual because y'all don't usually talk on the phone, right? Yes, ma'am, we don't. All right, and she says, where's Tuto? Did you know where Tuto was? Objection leading. Yes. No, no. Overruled. And where was Tuto? And Shrimp's house. And who's Shrimp? Oh, his girlfriend. Okay, so that's a woman that he was seeing around that time? Yes, ma'am. All right, and what did she say? Did she say anything about the money? Yeah, she said, who's going to come get this money? I said, he is. You go get it. All right, so she wanted to know who was going to come get the money. Yes, ma'am. And were you able to locate Mr. Garcia? Of course. And did y'all go get the money? I didn't go get it. He went to get it. You he didn't get your money? I was in a barbershop still. They brought the money to my house. Okay, and did you go to your house to get the money? Yes, ma'am. Who was present when you went to your house and got your money? Garcia and Katie. All right, and is that the house that we talked about earlier that you lived at with Jessica? Yes, ma'am. All right, so you go, you leave the barbershop, is that right? Yes, ma'am. And go to your house? Yes. Who gave you the money? Garcia. All right, and C Catherine Magbana was, was present as well? She was there. All right, and tell us about the money. How was it packaged? It was in a brown, um, a brown bag. Okay. Like a brown paper bag or a plastic? A brown paper bag. All right, and what about inside the brown paper bag? It was like a little clear plastic, a, a plastic bag inside of it as well. All right, and what was inside the clear plastic bag? Money, all hundreds. All hundreds? Yes, ma'am. And did you count the money? No. How do you know how much was there? Because I trust them. All right, so you were told it was 35000 Yes, ma'am. And did it seem like about that much to you? Yes, ma'am. And you said it was all hundreds. Were they... Um, Separated it all into stacks? They were stapled. Stapled? A thousand dollars stapled, each each one of them. So stacks of hundreds stapled together with like a stapler? Yeah, with a stapler. Not mm -hmm. all of them together, but a thousand dollars each was stapled. Okay. So you had a bunch of stacks of hundred dollar bills that were stapled into stacks of a thousand. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Who is Anthony Ortiz? That's one of my friends. All right. Is that a person that would know how to find you? Yes, ma'am. All right. And did Catherine Magbanoa know Anthony Ortiz? Yeah. And do you know his number, or if I say his number, would you be able to say yes or no that that's his number? Yeah. 305-762-0648. That's his number. Did you get any additional money other for this murder other than the money that you got in that brown paper bag? Yeah, he gave me an extra two grand. Who did? Garcia. When was that? In the car. <coughs> you say in the car. Was that the same day that you got the 35 grand? Yes, ma'am. Are you aware of any purchases that Mr. Garcia made with his portion of the money from this murder? Yes, ma'am. And what purchases were those? Well, we just bought some toys. Like what? Like cars, motorcycles. What about you? Did you buy any toys? Yeah, I bought a motorcycle. Right, I'm going to approach with States Exhibits 48.
start with 48. Do you recognize that exhibit? Yes, ma'am. How do you recognize it? Let's go see his motorcycle and the Monte Carlo is his. Uh, is this a fair and accurate photo of the toys that he bought with the proceeds of this murder? Yes, ma'am. Judge, at this time, I'd ask to introduce States 48. Any objection? Judge, if I may. You might. Pictures of the mother. Hello. No, nah, just one. The yellow one. The yellow and black one. Yes, ma'am. And what about this vehicle back here? Did you purchase that one money from there? Yes, ma'am. States Exhibit 49, do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. What does that show? Me and Garcia on the motorcycles. All right, are those the motorcycles y'all bought with the money from killing Mr. Markell? Yes, ma'am. Judge, at this time, I'd ask the moving evidence states 49. Any objection? No objection. No objection. They'll be admitted. 49 will be admitted. Do you know what Catherine Magbanawa did with her cut of the money? Not really. Did you dump your phone, the phone that you took to Tallahassee? Did you dump that phone after the murder? No, I think I just changed the number. Changed the number? And did you change the number because it might have been associated with a homicide? Yes, ma'am. What happened to the Prius? Well, we turned it back. The Who period, turned it back in? I turned it back in. And was it turned in on time? No. Tell us about that. Well, Garcia used it at night. We went out. He took the Prius, parked it somewhere around the house. He said he lost it. He said he didn't know where he put it at. So I had to go over there and look for it. Found it like, like a block and a half away from where he lived at, in Miami right. Beach. Miami Beach? Yeah. And so the Prius was a few days late, right? Yeah. Are you familiar with a wire intercept, a T3 wire intercept that was done in reference to this case? Mm -hmm. Not really. Have you had an opportunity to review some recorded calls that were captured on a, a disc? I heard it from one of my own girls. Say that again? I heard, I heard it before. Okay, were you, did you remember coming and listening with Investigator Newland to some phone calls and initialing whether or not you knew who the voices were on those calls? Wait, take the who? Newman? Newland, Investigator Jason Newland. Did you meet with him? Yeah, I met with him. Okay, and did he play some phone calls for you? And the gist of that was asking you, can you recognize the voices yes. on these calls? You remember that? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm going to approach with States Exhibit 138. Moment, All right, jury needs to take a break. We'll take ten minutes. Let everybody be seated, please. I'll identify the voices. Do you remember that? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to approach with what I've marked as state. Do you recognize this sheet? Yes, ma'am. And is this your initial here? Yes, ma'am. All right, and what about these check marks? What do these check marks indicate? The voices. All right, so on each of these letter phone calls, were you able to authenticate <coughs> the voices that are highlighted? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so for example, on call D, you were asked to listen oh, to see if that's... Move this into evidence, yes, and she... Overruled. Overruled. So, for example, on call D, you were asked to identify the voice of, there's two voices on there, and you were asked to identify the one that's highlighted, correct? Yes, ma'am. And does the check mark indicate that you were able to 
identify the yes, uh, highlighted voice. Okay. And on these calls, such as call K, there are two names highlighted there, Katie and Garcia. Does the check mark indicate you were able to authenticate both of those voices? Yes, ma'am. All right. And the ones that have check marks by um, Katie, is that referencing Catherine Magbanua? Yes, ma'am. So that was her voice on the call? Yes, ma'am. And the ones that have Garcia, that's referencing Sigredo Garcia's voice? Yes, ma'am. All right. And all the check marks indicate that you have authenticated those voices on those particular calls? Yes, ma'am. All right. Judge, at this time, I'd ask to introduce state 179. Is there a pick? Yes, Your Honor. First, I've never been shown what Ms. Catherine Money is referring to, and I just want to go sidebar and make my other objections. <clears throat> Mr. Rivera, I don't think I asked you what is your nickname if you have That's the uh blue tuxedo that Tato that's what Tato refers to as a blue tux tuxedo on Sigfredo. For those who are new to this, the gentleman in the blue there is Sigfredo, and then the the woman right here with the braids in her hair is Katie McBonawa flanked by her attorneys. Have one. Tato. Tato? Yeah. All right. And I want to take you back for a moment to the first trip to Tallahassee. Did Mr. Garcia engage in any phone calls with Ms. Magvanoa during that first trip to Tallahassee? Can't remember. Do you remember giving a proffer in this case on October 4th, 2016? Yes, ma'am. And do you remember giving some statements about um, Garcia having a lot of phone contact with Ms. Magbanoa on that first trip? Sustained. I'm going to approach and show you. Ask you to read the question and answer. Are you able to read no, very well on the can't read, can't write. All right. Judge, I'll ask for some guidance on that. I don't Sorry, give I don't guidance. Know. I don't give guidance, Ms. Okay, Kaplan. Okay, well, the question is, right, how do you know Sorry, that? I'm not exactly the question. It's happening in process. All right. Uh... Move on, Ms. Captain. Yes, sir. Do you have any recollection of um, any conversation, overhearing any conversation in which Ms. Magbana, well, Ms. Magbanwa was concerned about you and Mr. Garcia doing something stupid or messing it up? Can't remember. Do you remember any conversation that you were a privy to where Mr. Garcia was telling Ms. Magbanawa to make sure those people have the money? Yeah. When was that? That was that uh, Friday after the murder happened. Okay. Were there other conversations that happened on the first trip where the money was discussed? No. You don't remember Mr. Garcia telling Ms. Magbanawa that they better have the money? Now I don't remember. Okay. Slide forward a little bit more. I think you've got it back up. Right. I'm way in the mic. Do you remember any conversation where Ms. Magbanawa was indicating to Mr. Garcia where you could hear her saying, make sure you get everything done right. When you are done, call me. Yes. When was that? That was... The second trip was when um murder the guy. Okay. And were you a member of this conspiracy to accomplish the murder of Mr. Markell? Not at all. You didn't have anything to do with it? I mean, um, and yeah, he told me about it to go, but if you're saying if I got hired, no. Well, you got paid, didn't you? Yeah, from Garcia. All right, so Garcia hired you to do a murder, didn't he? Yes, ma'am. And who hired him? 
the um, Addison family. I'm sorry? The Wendy family. Wendy's family hired him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how was Wendy's family connected to Sigfredo Garcia? Because Katie. Katie was um, daddy, um, dating the dentist. Okay. Did Katie know about the murder? Yes, ma'am. Did Katie have a role in hiring Sigfredo Garcia? Yes, ma'am. How do you know that? Because he told me. And Katie got paid? Yes, ma'am. Objection that's deleting. Sustained. Do you know which member of the Adelson family? Do you know? Did you have any contact with any no, member of the Adelson family? Did any member of the Adelson family ever pay you any money? No, ma'am. Did you ever have any phone calls with any member of the Adelson no, family? No, ma'am. Text messages? Nope. Meetings? No. Nope. Any other type of communication? Not at all. Do you see the person in the courtroom that you say hired Sigfredo Garcia to do this homicide? The only one I see is Katie. All right. Would you please point her out and describe what she's wearing? She's wearing on gray and black. Let the record reflects the witness has identified. Would you put your hand down, please, Ms. Kepner? Witness has makes identified. It hard to hear you. Sir? Makes it hard to hear you when you've got your hand up around yes, your sir. mouth. The witness has identified Defendant Magbanawa. No further questions. Cross. Um, for, oh, yeah, man, nice note here from Mandy. I don't know where you guys, I don't know where you guys who are newer to the channel have been hiding all eyes, but it's so nice to have you all here with us. Absolutely love seeing all the new names, love seeing all the chat. If you're new and you're lurking, say hi if you want to. Uh, we love it. Um, thanks for being here. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Now, for those folks who haven't seen this trial, this attorney now is the attorney for Sigfredo Garcia. And this man acts like such a tough guy. Like such a tough guy. Like he's challenging this Latin king. He, he, just wait till you see this. I wish this guy... <laughs> just, just wait till you see it. And by the way, this guy looked into the projector light one day during the trial. And you would have thought he looked directly into the sun. He almost keeled over. Because one time on accident, he walked in front of the projector and it was as if the sun beam went directly to his eyeball but when Sigfred went but now he's going to be a big time tough guy so uh here we go if i may proceed judge you may thank you judge good afternoon mr rivera good afternoon Do you have any aliases other than your full legal name as Luis Rivera? Yeah, Tato. What about King Tato? Yeah, King Tato. And where is the nickname King Tato derived from? King is from Latin King. And Tato is my nickname since I was a baby. You're a Latin King legacy, right? Yeah. And I say that because you were born into being a Latin King, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And by being born into this organization, um, that means that you had family members that were part of the organization. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Direction, relevance. If I can explain. Same. If I can explain sidebar, Judge, it goes to material. And Mr. Rivera, what was your title with uh, the North Miami tribe of the Latin Kings uh, when you got arrested in this case? This case right here? Or the federal case? I was a leader. Now, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but there's five designations of leaders in the Latin King organization, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. There. By the way, and as as um, Tata will aptly say, this had nothing to do with the Latin Kings, but this guy wants to go a full deep dive into the Latin King, everything about the Latin Kings, but this has nothing to do with the Latin Kings. Here we go. There are certain crowns, correct? There's like a fifth crown, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, is that called the secretary? Yes, sir. There's a fourth crown, which is called the treasurer. Yes, sir. There's a third crown, which is called the enforcer. Yes, sir. There's a second crown that's called, I can't pronounce it, it's C-A-C-I-Q-U. I think it. Okay. And then there's the Inca or the Primera, the first crown, correct? Yes, sir. And that's what you were? Yes, sir. The first crown of the North Miami tribe of the Latin Kings, correct? Yes, sir. And in addition to being a local organization, well, it's not just a local organization, is that correct? Yes, sir. There's Latin Kings throughout the state of Florida, is that correct? Yes, sir. And in, in addition to the state of Florida, I believe there's 39 states in the United States where the Latin Kings have a presence, is that correct? Yes, sir. At the time of, uh, of, of this incident in 2014, how old were you, sir? I like 32. 32. And you had been the Inca, or the first crown of the North Miami tribe since you, were in your, since you were about 15 or 16, is that correct? Yes, sir. How many members of the North Miami tribe were there in 2014? I mean, that's a question for real. I'm sorry, sir? That's a serious question. Uh, I, I'm asking it. That can be a lot, no doubt. How many, if you remember, as the leader of this North Miami tribe, how many members of the Latin Kings were part of the North Miami tribe in 2014? Probably had like a hundred. A hundred. Probably. Does that include all of Miami or is that just North Miami? That's just North Miami. So including Miami, that number goes up. Is that correct? Of course. And as we move exponentially north and west and a little bit south, the numbers increase, correct? Yes, sir. Would you agree with me that there is a Latin King presence in Key West? Yeah. Broward County? Yes. Tampa? Everywhere. Okay. Everywhere, right? Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to ask some specifics, and I apologize for cutting you off, but I just need to make sure I get my questions out. So St. Petersburg, yes? Yes. Because that's part of everywhere, right? Yes, sir. Naples, correct? Yes, sir. Jacksonville? Yes. What about here in Tallahassee? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Don't Isn't know. Tallahassee part of everywhere? Yeah, but I don't, I don't associate people in Tallahassee. Never been in Tallahassee in my life. So just so I'm clear... When I asked you if there's that Latin usually King. means you're going to repeat a question. Let's not repeat, Mr. Sanginet. So out of all the places in Florida that have Latin Kings, the only place that you're not aware if they have Latin Kings is here in Tallahassee. Is that your testimony? Yeah, I mean, they got them, but I don't know nobody from Tallahassee. So now, now you're saying that they have them, but you don't they know them, them personally, correct? They got them, but I don't know nobody in Tallahassee. Well, do you think that they know you? Maybe. Okay. And that's because you're a leader in a substantially sized tribe of the of the Latin Kings, is that correct? Yeah, they don't know me, but they know my. They probably know my name. So, could you pick up a phone and call somebody and get information on somebody that's associated with the Latin Kings in, let's say, Jacksonville? Could you do that? If you're the leader, of course. Okay, and you were a leader, right? Yes, sir. So, what about? Could you pick up the phone and find out find out if there's people in Gainesville? You could do that as a leader, right? Yes, sir. Everywhere, right? Everywhere. Okay. Because in addition to being a local organization, it's a statewide and national organization, correct? Yes, sir. And you've been a leader of this organization pretty much your entire adult life, correct? Yes, sir.
How do you how do you become? What do you need to do to become a Latin king? I was born into it. What about how do you get? What is your definition of gangbang? Gangbang. Yes, sir. Latin King is a family. First and foremost, a family. It's an organization that everybody take care of everybody. You take care of the neighborhood. Do you recall if I ever asked you what were the things? You uh, interesting. You know, Veronica says objection, Your Honor. Relevance. The interesting thing about Tato testifying is. He doesn't really have uh he doesn't have an attorney, right? He doesn't really have an attorney representing him. So unless it's really going to hurt the state's case, they don't really say much. So like he's kind of out there on his own. He doesn't have someone representing him in this. You had to do to become a Latin king. Do you recall that? Yeah. Do you recall what your answer was? No, I don't remember. If I show you a copy you got to read it of of I got to read it. Yeah, I can't read. Let me ask you this. Did you tell me on October, I'm sorry, on January 31st, 2018, that to get in, initiated to the gang, you had just gang banged? Does that sound about right? Yes, sir. And would it be safe to say that when I asked you to expand on what gang banging means, you said surviving life. Does that sound about right? Yes, sir. Does that include selling drugs? Everything, I guess. Okay. Did you sell drugs? Yes, sir. I got to survive. And you did this to take care of your family, correct? Yes, sir. And to take care of the nation, right? Yes, sir. And when I say the nation, I'm discussing the Latin King Nation, correct? Yes, sir. Now, would proceeds from your illegal activity go back to the organization? Repeat that question again? Sure, no problem. Would the proceeds... What proceeds mean? Proceeds, like the money you make? Okay. Okay. If there's ever a time where I ask a question that you don't understand what I'm saying, let me know. And I'll clarify just so I'll make sure that everybody's on the same page, all right? I'm doing it right now, sir. I'm sorry? I said I'm doing it right now. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. So proceeds means what money you make. So the money you made from your illegal activity, did you give it back to the nation? It's a treasure. You put money in a treasure. Okay. So the answer is yes. Yes. Okay. Now, to your knowledge, well, let me ask it this way. Is there a, like a manual or a book that your organization uses that has rules in it? Yes, sir. Does it go by the initials KMC? Yes, sir. Tell the members of the jury what those initials stand for. You said KMC? Yes, sir. It's, it's A K M C. Amor de, Amor de Rey. Okay. I'm sorry. I, can't. I don't know how many Simpsons fans are here, especially old school Simpsons, which I used to love the Simpsons. Not so much anymore. But every time I watch Tato testify with this guy, with this attorney, I think of this scene where Homer wants to buy a gun, but the gun store owner's like, hey, man, you got to do a background check. We got to wait like 24 hours or 48 hours. And Homer gets really pissed. And this is what he says. He goes, I'd kill you if I had my gun. And I just, I don't know why. I just always think of the scene with Tato. Tato has got to be thinking right now, if we were on the street right now, you would not be such a tough ass like you're trying to be. I can barely understand what you're saying. Can you say that a little bit louder, sir? Amor de rey. Okay. And is that, in, is, that a, is that English or another language? That's Spanish. Okay. And hence the name Latin Kings, correct? Latin King. And even though you can't read or write, can you translate from English to Spanish? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you tell the members of this jury from English to Spanish what that means? That means um, al almighty. <laughs> almighty love. Almighty love. And that's your rule book, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you ever heard it uh, initialized as KMC? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you know what 
Well, let me let me let me ask it this way: Is there a portion in that with with regards to a code of silence that your gang has to to, to abide by? Yes, sir. So one of the principles that's in your rule book is that whatever activity you do within your organization should maintain within that organization. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And whatever activity that you do, if it's illegal, you're not supposed to talk about it, correct? Of course. Okay. Now, according to your book, the KMC, is there a punishment or a violation that one receives if you provide information against another Latin king? What do you mean by that? So let's say a, a buddy of yours, one of your brothers, let's call him King Anthony, okay? Let's say King Anthony did a crime and you helped the prosecution or you helped the police prosecute him. Would that be a violation according to your rule book? Objection, relevance, and hypothetical. Overruled. Go ahead, sir. Of course. What would be your punishment? I'm for, going through it right now. They're trying to kill me. They're going to try to kill you? Yeah. So you'll agree with me that cooperating against a fellow king would result in probably the most serious penalty that you can have in your manifesto, correct? Of course. Loss of your life. Yes, sir. Now you have a tattoo designating your allegiance to your organization, correct? Yes, sir. And that's on your stomach? Yes, sir. And it's the five points or the five points of the crown, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you still have that tattoo? Yes, I do. Are you still a member of the Latin Kings? No. Nope. When did you lose your membership? When I went back to Coleman, back to the feds. 2016. When in 2016? Right when I came over here to cooperate. Okay. So at the beginning of your cooperation, which I would say late September, early October, does that sound about right, sir? Yeah. You lost your affiliation because you violated one of the rules in your Latin King Manifesto. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Are you in general population at Coleman? I'm sorry. You're, let me ask the question this way. Where, where are you currently housed? Um, Arizona. Okay. And that's in a federal facility? Yes, sir. And as the prosecution said, you are currently serving a 151-month sentence based on your agreement to plead guilty in a federal racketeering case. Is that yes, correct? Yes, sir. And do you know what, do you know what racketeering, sorry. I apologize. Strike that question. And so, as part of your federal sentence, you have been designated, designated by the Bureau of Prisons, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And your designation in the Bureau of Prisons is in a federal facility in Arizona, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, for, you'll agree with me that for uh, inmates, that they're concerned for their safety and welfare, there's a special portion of the federal facility that they can put you in, right? Yes, sir. And that's called the SHU, right? Yes, sir. And the SHU stands for a special housing unit, right? Yes, sir. Are you currently in the SHU? Not right now. Okay. When you say not right now, I, I see that you're here in Leon County, right? Yes, so sir. when you met not right now, prior to them bringing you over here, when's the last time you were in the SHU? In Leon County. I'm sorry? In Leon County. In Leon County. When you were in federal custody, were you ever in special housing? Yes, sir. Okay. What about in Arizona? The Arizona, their prison I'm in, is called a drop by yard. It's called a PC. It's a picture person. That's where they got me at right now. Arthur Butler coming through with $10. Arthur Butler. Thank you so much, Arthur. Really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So are you in special housing in your federal facility? No. 
you're in general population, correct? Yes, sir. Have they had this, by they, well, let me, let me rephrase that. You indicated earlier that if you testified against a Latin king, you, they'd, they'd try to kill you, correct? Testify against anybody. Well, I'm asking you testifying against a Latin king. I think he okay. answered your question. This thing, Do you have another question? Yes, Judge. See, um, this judge, this judge doesn't take any shit. He's like, he answered the question. Move on, jabroni. What is a KOS order? KOS. Yes. KOS. Right. Kill on sight. Kill on sight. Are you familiar with that? I just said it, sir. Have you ever given a KOS order? No. During your, you're aware that at some point between September and November, the U.S. government put a wire intercept on your federal indictment investigation on your phone. Is that correct? Yeah, they got caught. Yeah, I know. And what I'm asking you is this. You know that the feds had you wired up for a month. Yeah, I found out. Okay. And you found out because, like in any criminal investigation, one of the things that they do is they show you the evidence that they have against you, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And you'll agree with me that in your federal investigation, you learned that for 30 days, the federal government listened to every one of your phone calls. Is that correct? Yes, sir. In October 2014, did you have, as a Latin king, an issue with members of the 400 gang that moved into Highland Village? Yes, sir. And in, Octo in late October of 2014... My Lanta, this is so irrelevant. Who cares? Teen. Did you, Luis Rivera, initiate a series of phone calls asking for assistance from fellow Latin King gang members? Do you yes, recall doing that? And do you recall that what you initially wanted to do, or what you asked your fa fellow Latin Kings, your brothers, to do, was to get armed up and come and help you deal with these other gang members? Is that correct? Action, relevance. Sustain. Thank you. Not relevant. Have you ever been involved, other than the case that we're talking about, have you ever been involved in the distribution of narcotics? Objection. Relevance. Let's go sidebar. Sidebar. Which we don't have to watch, so that's good. What drugs did you sell in the year 2012? Weed and cocaine. Did you sell drugs in the year 2013? Probably my whole life. So would it be fair to say that from your teenage years up until your arrest, you were involved in the distribution of narcotics? Yes, sir. And I know this because we've spoken about it. It was initially just weed, right? Yes, sir. And as you got older, you started selling powder, right? Have you ever committed an armed robbery? Yes, sir. Do you remember ever giving me an answer different? than that. I can't remember. Now you said that you can't you can't read or write, correct? Yes, sir. Do you know the difference between the words yes and no? <laughs> yes, sir. May I approach judge? What a dick question. What an asshole. He's such a dick. It's he said he can't read. I'm not, you're not gonna give him something to read. Judge, it's just a different shape between the words yes and no. No. Proceed. 
And <laughs> Judge is like, no, get the fuck out of here. Do you recall taking a deposition with me in January, on January 31st, 2018? Yes, sir. Okay. And during that deposition, I was there and Ms. Kaplan was there? Yes, sir. And there was a person that's called a court reporter that was taking notes of what you were saying? Yes, sir. Judge, I'm going to refer to line 22 and 23. I asked you, have you ever committed an armed robbery? And your answer was no. Now, today, when I ask you that, your answer is no, yes. Question right? is, do you recall that question and that answer? Do you recall that question and that impeachment? Do you recall that question and answer? I can't remember. Once again, Your Honor, I would ask to be able to show the, the witness. Move on, Mr. Sanger. <laughs> Move on, Biatch. So you indicated you have committed armed robberies, right? Yes, sir. And an you gave answer. a statement to law enforcement, uh, I believe, October 4th. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were through with your question. No, Judge. On October 4th, 2016, you remember that? Let me kind of refresh your recollection. You're sitting there. You got your lawyer, Mr. Collins, to your right. Uh -huh. You got Detective Isom on your left, and you got an FBI investigator, Mr. Sanford, directly in front of you. I got my lawyer who to my right? Chuck Collins. I think it was David Collins. Oh, so you do remember? Yeah. Okay. I'm is trying to Dave, refresh my memory, too. Is David the older or the younger gentleman? David is the father. Is the father. Okay. So you had David Collins to your right. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay, and you're sitting at a table, right? <clears throat> and did they... Are you... You remember that they told you that they videotaped the, the interview, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So would it sound about right that this whole videotaped statement that you gave on October 4th, 2016, in the presence of your lawyer, with Detective Isom, Detective Stanford, took about two hours long? Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And do you also remember that during that videotaped statement, um, you made, you called yourself a jack boy. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Okay. What's a jack boy? A jack boy is a rob drug dealers. Rob drug dealers. Now, when you rob a drug dealer, do you rob them on the street? Again, as I said earlier, if that was my job, like if I'm in the gang and they're like, you're going to be the guy that robs drug dealers, and they would be like, you're the jack boy, I'd be like, no, I'm not the jack boy. Let's... Let's work on something else here. I'm, you're not calling me the Jack Boy. I don't like it. it sounds like ejaculate. Let's work on a different name. I'm not going to be the Jack Boy. I'll take the money, but don't call me Jack Boy. I don't like it. Streets? Or do you go to their house? Go to their house and take their dope. Because drug dealers don't keep their dope out of the streets. It's usually stashed somewhere in their house, right? Yes, sir. So I'm going to ask serious questions with regards to these. I mean, do you knock on the door and say, excuse me, can I have your drugs? Does it work like that? No. So would it be fair to say that when you go in there, you have the intention such to an have asshole. use force or intimidate He's such an by asshole. using... Do you say, excuse me, can I have the drugs? What do I want the name to be, Rachel? Hmm. Um... Dr drug bully? I don't know. Uh... I don't know. It's a good question. Of the, or intimidate with the use of force. Yes, sir. Okay. And would it be a fair statement to say that you do this while you're armed? Yes, sir. Okay. And Ooh, what would the be the weapon that you would most likely use during a robbery of a drug dealer? A handgun. Okay. And what happens if you go in and you ask you? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you knock on the door or do you kick down the door? I knock on the door. You knock on the door. Yeah. Okay. And when they open the door, what do you do? You give me everything. Okay. And do you set up surveillance before you do these robberies? No. No. Okay. So do you care whether or not if there's kids in the house when you're committing an armed robbery of a, of a, of a drug dealer? I do care if there's kids in the house. And when I do rob somebody, there's no kids in the house. But you just told me you don't do surveillance. I 1,000% believe him when he says that, by the way. How do you know? Because there ain't going to be no kids in the house. I, I already, we know the guy we're going to rob. That's it. You know the guy that you're going to rob. Yeah. But yet you didn't do any surveillance, right? Ain't, ain't no kids in the house. 
So you're telling me every time you hit a drug dealer, you knew whether or not that there were kids in the house because you have those moral standards? Yes, sir. I never hit nobody with no kids in no house. And you're saying that under oath to this jury? Yes, sir. And you understand what being under oath is, correct? Go ahead. Um, explain to me. I mean, at the beginning, you raised your right hand. You swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And I'm sure, as your lawyer has advised you, there is a penalty for lying under oath, right? Yes, sir. Okay. He's so condescending to this guy. Have you ever lied Makes under me oath? so mad. No. That's not a proper question. Well, let me ask you a question. The judge is pissed, too. Like, the judge is like, this guy is a fucking jabroni. Get him out of here. Do you recall when you pled guilty in federal court, there was a document called a factual proffer. Do you recall that? Yeah, I heard. May I approach, Judge? May I approach you, Your Honor? What purpose is it? This <laughs> the judge just says no. Can I approach? Nope. Show somebody can't read the written document, Mr. Sanger. Judge, it's got his initials on it. It has his signature. All right. It's got a date. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Rivera, I'm showing you what's been marked. As Look at Tato staring him down. Defense Exhibit 2. But we already have a defense exhibit too, unless we're going to do separate documents for uh, Garcia. It's under Garcia, Judge. I apologize. It's, it's been marked as Garcia number two. Do you want me to change that, Your Honor? That, that'll be okay for now. We can discuss that later. Now, you indicated that you can't read, but you know what your name looks like, right? Of course. Whose name is that right there? My name. Okay. <laughs> Is that your signature in the bottom right-hand corner? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, your initials? Yes, sir. On page one? Are these your initials on page two? Yes, sir. Are these your initials on page three? Yes, sir. Are these your initials on page four, sir? Yes, sir. And whose signature is that? Mine's. And can you read numbers? Yeah. What number is that? 11, 6, 15. So on November 6, 2015, is that the day you gave your factual proffer? Yes. Are these the signatures? Is that your name? And these are the initials? Yes, sir. At this time, Judge, I'll move Defense Exhibit 2 under Garcia into evidence. Sir. Objection. Hearsay. Uh, for impeachment purposes. I sustain the objection at this point in time. I, I fail to see the relevance, but move on. Let's stand it up. Do you recall me asking you if you had the crimes associated with your factual proffer on your record? Yes, sir. And you told me that even though it's on your record, that you didn't do some of these crimes. Is that correct? Yeah, I told you that. You told me that, right? Yeah. Okay. And... The document that I just showed you, did your lawyer, when he went over it with you, indicate that there's a portion that says, I agree with all the facts set forth in the factual proffer? Yes, sir. Okay. And also, when you took your plea of guilty in front of a federal judge, did he read this factual proffer to you? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Word for word, right? Uh, not word for word, but he told me. He explained to me. Okay. And it's the same the objection, Mr. Sangan. Let's move on. Which objection, Your Honor? I've found it's not relevant. Move on. Just one second, Judge. Sure. 
you or any violent crime. I'm sorry, Mr. Rivera, have you ever uh, used your position as a leader in the Latin Kings to recruit other Latin Kings to help you further any violent crimes? Action yes, sir. and relevance. Overruled. You yes, can sir. answer that. Well, I got a question for you. I'm here for another indictment. Well, Judge, with all, uh, sorry, Judge, the, could, I'm objecting to the to the witness asking questions of the attorney. Ask another question. So if you could answer that, the, the question that I just asked you. Ask, if you, a, ask your question again, please. Sure, no problem. Mr. Rivera, have you ever instilled the use of other Latin kings to further any kind of violent criminal act? Yes, sir. Okay. In fact, in the one month that your phone had a wire intercept, you attempted three separate violent acts reaching out to other fellow Latin kings. Isn't that correct? Objection, yes, relevance. So you can answer that question. Yes, sir. So on a 30-day period... You've asked it once. Thank you, Judge. Yes, once. sir. We don't need to do it twice. No problem, Judge. Thank <laughs> this you. This judge hates him so much. And in the future, if I refer to other fellow kings... Is every fellow king have the word king prior to a nickname or a designation? Yes, sir. So the person that you were talking about earlier, Anthony, um, was it Rivera? Uh, Torres. Anthony Torres. Did he have a king name? Hivaro. Hivaro. And is he still alive? He's dead, sir. Did he die here in South Florida? I was in prison when I found out. Um, do you know where he died? No. Uh, do you know how he died? I heard a motorcycle accident. And this is the individual that you're claiming you called to find my client when Katie called you, right? Yes, sir. Katie is Sigfredo's wife, as you described her, right? Yes, sir. She has his numbers, right? Yes, sir. You have his numbers, right? Yes, sir. And just for the record, Sigfredo had multiple phones at all times, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So let's get to... Let's get to June 4th, okay? Or... Let's actually let's get to June third. Do you remember what time Sigfredo came up to you and told you that he had a job for you in Tallahassee? It was late night, maybe like about ten, eleven o'clock at night, somewhere around there. Okay. And what time did you guys hit the road? Excuse me. What time did you guys get on the road? Right away. Right away. Okay. So let's just be. Let's just go ahead and say around 11 o'clock. Does that sound about right? Maybe. I can't really remember the time, but I'm saying like between 9 to 11, it was out of the way. Okay. 9 to 11 p.m. Yes, sir. And this is when Secreto Garcia came to you with a rented, was it a Nissan? I think it was. Okay. But you didn't rent the car there that day, correct? Nope. And he came to you and he told you you had a job, right? Yes. Okay. And when did he tell you you had that job? In my house. Okay. And from there, and you went and you got a gun, right? I can't remember if it was the same day or not. Well, let me ask it this way. You had guns at your disposal, right? Yes, sir. Okay. You're a Latin king. You can call. Did you have your own personal firearm? No, I went and bought one. Let me let me see if I if I didn't ask that question correctly. Did you have your own piece? Did you have your own firearm for your own protection prior to the day? I always kept one. You always kept one. Yeah. Okay. So you had your own gun, right? Luis Rivera's gun, right? <laughs> yes, sir. But you choose not. You chose not to take that gun. Because you wanted to find another gun. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Because wouldn't that be a smarter thing to do? Have a firearm if you're going to commit, whether it's a home invasion or a murder, that nobody knows is yours, right? 
Yes, sir. Okay. So, did you call one of your Latin King brothers to get a gun? No. Where'd you go? To the corner. To the corner, like in the hood? In the hood. Okay. And you, so you got a gun from a guy in the corner. White guy or black guy? Black, black guy. Black guy. So a black guy in the hood, you walked up to him and said, I need a piece, right? Yes, sir. Would it be safe to say, well, let me ask you this. In your Latin King Manifesto, does it talk about not involving non-Latin kings to ensure integrity within your organization? A way for the murder case or for the Latin King case? I think it's the same thing. No, it's not. Okay, so answer my question. Don't answer my question with a question. It's not. What you talking about? You keep talking about the Latin kings. It ain't got nothing to do with well, the murder. Well, hold on. But, the but murder. you're King Tato, right? Yeah, but it don't got nothing to do with the murder. According to you, right? Because if you were, if you were, wait a, wait a minute, stop. Ask another question. Just saying it. Uh, Ask the answer the question. Is please. there a portion of the Latin King Manifesto which suggests that if you were to buy a, a gun to commit a crime, you'd buy it from another king to make sure you don't get in trouble? No. You can buy it from wherever you want to buy it from. You've been a leader of this organization since you were 15 years old, right? Yes, sir. Right. And so you understand, I mean, you're cooperating now, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so you understand there's informants and cooperators everywhere, right? Yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. Could be a stranger, could allegedly be your best friend, right? Yes, sir. So instead of calling one of your hundred gang member brothers, <laughs> where you are the king of the castle, the lion of the jungle, you choose to go to the hood and ask the stranger for a gun. That's your testimony? Yes, sir, because okay. they don't got nothing to do with what I'm, what I'm about to do. So you go, and you get this firearm. Does the gun come with bullets at least? No. You have to buy bullets separately? Yes, sir. All right. Kind of like a toy without batteries? Yeah, you can okay. say that. So did you go, where'd you go buy the bullets? In a gun store. So you didn't ask the same guy on the corner to throw you some bullets in? No. Okay. So you go to the gun store, and do you buy a pack of bullets? Uh, single bullets. You buy, you, buy, you buy single bullets? And is this regulated by the person that owns the firearm store? No. No? So you can just go buy bullets, you don't have to give ID or anything? Never gave my ID. And you bought a single bullet? No, we bought a few bullets. You bought three bullets? A few bullets. Like, fi I'm sorry. like 15 I'm, bullets. Oh, I you want me to give you the number correct? Well, it's kind of hard to hear you sometimes. So, f 15 bullets? Yeah. Did you call Garcia and ask him if he needed some bullets too? Oh, he was with me. He was with you? Yeah. Do you know what time it was that you went to the... So, Garcia was with you when you went to the hood? To what? get the gun? No. Okay. Which car did you use to go to the hood? My car. What kind of car is that? I had an old Mercedes. An old Mercedes? Yeah. Okay. So you drive your own car to the hood. At this time, you already knew you needed you needed the, the, the gun to commit this to commit whatever crime you thought was going that you were gonna do, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you chose and, and Garcia's right there with a the rental car, right? Right? What about the gun? Right. When I about mean, the gun, he was with a... Come on, come, come back, come back, come, come okay. back with me, man. <laughs> after Garcia told you he had a job to do, how long after that did you go get the gun immediately? I can't remember. Okay. I think I told you that already. Well, I'm just trying to create a timeline. Yeah, but you're you going back and forth trying to confuse me. We're not going to do that. Just come on. I, I'm not trying to confuse I'm trying. I'm trying to ask a very simple question. He tells you you have a job, Right. Right? Yeah. Okay. You assume this is a violent job, right? That's going to require you to get a firearm, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you go... F I just It's just pretty, it's pretty wild for folks who are unaware of this trial. I don't know how many folks are new to this trial in the chat right now, but just to think 
how many people would come out of this trial, not, you know, go into it knowing nothing, and then come out of it thinking, man, I like Louis Rivera, the Latin king, about a billion times better than any of the Adelsons. Like, I'd rather, you know, you know, I get so angry when Wendy's on the stand or Charlie's on the stand or hearing Donna and her bullshit on the... F- but, like, Tato, I'm not... Ang- like, I mean, obviously, he was part of this. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a good... You know, he was part of the deal. But compared to the Adelscums, I mean, it's like night and day. From where you li- Are you living with Jessica at the time or are you on your Miami Beach house? I live with Jessica. Okay. So you go, it's 135th Street? Yes, sir. So where'd you go? The Pork and Bees? Which hood did you go to? It's right around the corners. I live in the hood, man. Okay. So you go down the street in your car, right? Yes, sir. And you buy a fire. Yes, sir. And then you come back and get in the car with Garcia and then you go buy bullets? Now you confused me right there, though. <clears throat> I think I went with Garcia in the car. Okay. I can't remember. I okay. can't remember. Okay. Now you can. Okay. So after you get the bullets, do you guys head up north? We got the bullets next day, man. Okay. Let me refresh my memory. You're going back and forth. No, listen, take your time. Take your time. (laughs) We got nothing but time. We got 19 years. Can't take that long. (laughs) Ask a question. I mean, honestly, even the judge in this case clearly likes Tato better than his attorney like a thousand times. You got a citation on June 4th in the morning, right? The prosecution showed you? Yeah. Okay. Did you get the gun on June 3rd or June 2nd? I already had the gun going up there. That wasn't my question, sir. My question is, after Mr. Garcia allegedly told you about this purported job, you said that you went to get a gun, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Did he tell you about this job? The night of or the day before you left going north? No, the same night he told me about it. Okay, the same night. So you went down the corner, got the gun, and then got your bullets and then headed up north, right? Yes, sir. You testified originally on direct, direct examination that... He drove, right? Yes, sir. And then the prosecutor showed you a ticket, and then you said, well, we had to switch out, right? Yes, sir. Is it your testimony? Well, let me ask you this. Was, were you and Garcia drinking on your way up north? Every time. Every time, okay. I was snorting coke. Okay, well, that's what I'm getting to. And you and Garcia... We're drinking and driving, right? Yes, sir. Snorting cocaine? Yes, sir. Who was snorting more coke, you or Sigfredo? Sigfredo. I'm sorry, Mr. Garcia, I apologize, sir. Mr. Garcia, who was doing more coke, you or him? Him. Okay, like a little bit or a lot more? Just a a lot more, a little bit more. A little bit more. How much cocaine did you and Mr. Garcia go through from Miami to Gainesville? Can't remember. And a, a gram? I can't remember. Two grams? I can't remember, sir. How much did you take up there? I don't remember. About an eight ball sound right? Maybe a little bit more, probably. Okay. So a little bit more than eight balls, how many grams? 30, uh, 3.5. So 3.5 is one eight ball, so you took a little bit more. So let's say would about five grams sound about right? Probably. So it's your testimony that as an experienced gang member, you get in a rental car. Sounds like we're about to repeat what's been said. We're not going to keep repeating everything twice. Let's move on, please. Okay. In in, In the car that you were driving, you had been drinking alcohol. There were little alcohol bottles. Yes, sir. Okay. When you got pulled over by the police, you were driving, right? Obviously, you got the ticket, right? Yes, sir. Did you check to see if you had any remnants of cocaine powder on your nose? Not at all. 
What about uh, Mr. Garcia? Did you look to see if he had any remnants of co cocaine on his nose? No. And in the car are two firearms? Yes, sir. I think this will be better. Sorry, Judge. The location on your driver's license as your address is 1805 Normandy Drive, Apartment 3. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's in Miami Beach, Florida. Is that correct? Yes, sir. How long did you live in Miami Beach? My whole life. You were born April 25th, 1983? Yes, sir. You're a Hispanic male and you're five foot four? Yes, sir. And the citation is going 90 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone, correct? Yes, sir. So in conjunction to all the things that I've already described, the firearms, the drugs, the empty bottles, you were going 90 miles an hour at 9 o'clock in the morning, correct? Yes, sir. Now, the officer that pulled you over was a Florida, was it a Florida, it was a FHP, Florida Highway Patrol? Yeah, I think so. At any point, did he ask you to exit the vehicle to determine if he needed to conduct field sobriety exercises? No, sir. Did you smoke any marijuana in the car? No, sir. Did you take any marijuana with you? No, sir. So it's you and, you and Mr. Garcia in a rental car with all the contraband we, we discussed and Trooper Downing just issues you a citation for speeding, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, that citation took place <coughs> on a mile marker. Angel, right here. I-75 northbound, mile marker 374. Is that correct? Uh, I'm going to move that in for you. He's telling me where to go. I don't even know where I was at. And who's he? Garcia. Garcia. Did he have his GPS on his phone? Uh, in his brain. In his brain. Had you ever been up to Tallahassee with, with Mr. Garcia before? Never in my life. And it was your testimony earlier that Mr. Garcia never utilized his cell phone GPS. Is that correct? No. And as you indicated to the members of this jury, he was right next to you. If he was using his phone, you would have been able to see that he was using his phone for GPS, correct? Yes, sir. And he was able to get you not only from... Miami, Florida to, to Tallahassee, but to drive around in Tallahassee to the appropriate locations. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Do you know roughly how far mile, mark, mile marker 374 is from Gainesville to Tallahassee? No idea. After you received this citation, who drove? Did you continue driving? Yes, sir. And so, from at least Gainesville to Tallahassee, you drove the rest of the way? Yes, sir. Did you guys still have the alcohol bottles in, in, the, in the Nissan after you got pulled over? 
Yeah. It was in a brown paper bag. Brown paper bag. You didn't think to throw it out afterwards? No, it didn't even cross my mind. How many drinks would you say that you had consumed? I can't remember that. Was it one? I can't remember that, sir. Was it two? Move on. <laughs> what about Mr. Garcia? Were you what? watching how many alcoholic beverages he was consuming? Not at all. How many alcoholic beverages, how many little bottles did you guys buy? About a bunch. I just can't remember how many. Give me a rough estimate of what I a bunch I can't remember how many, sir. Multiple? That means more than, more than two? Uh, of course, it's more than two, but I can't remember how many. And do you remember how long it took to drive from Miami to Gainesville? Uh, I don't know. It took a couple of hours. I mean, a bunch of hours. I don't remember, though. And during that time, did you guys consume all the alcoholic beverages that you had from Miami to Gainesville? Or did you have more alcohol after you got pulled over? No, I think we had drank them all already. So when you get to Tallahassee, and you're still driving, right? Yes, sir. Where do you go on, on June 4th, the same day of the citation? We went straight to the hotel. Okay. We, went to, we went to go rent a hotel that day. You went to rent a hotel. Okay. And did you pick the hotel, or did Mr. Garcia pick the hotel? Garcia picked the hotel. Do you remember which exit you guys took off the highway? No, sir. You were driving, though, right? Yes, sir. And how much of the cocaine did you have left? Do you remember? No, I can't remember. You think you had burned through most of it? Probably. And would it be a fair assessment to say that you hadn't slept all night? Yeah, I didn't sleep. Okay. And the night before, you didn't know that this was going to be uh, occurring, right? You found out that's that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, you had been up all day and all night? And you could, correct. And you consumed multiple alcoholic beverages, correct? Yes, sir. And you and Mr. Garcia had consumed multiple grams of cocaine. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So, it's also your testimony that somewhere after Orlando, that Mr. Garcia, according to you, tells you that this is a homicide. Right? Is that first trip or the second trip? First trip. Okay. Right? Yes, sir. That's when you find out it's a, it's a homicide. I just want to make sure, sir. Okay. And it's your testimony to these jurors that he told you that he's going to give you either 30 or 35 stacks, right? Yes, sir. Okay. It's also been your testimony to this jury that you believed that he thought that you were going to do the shooting, right? Yes, sir. And just for the record, your testimony is that you did not do the shooting, correct? Yes, sir. Did you still receive the same amount of money? Yes, sir. So for not committing the act that you were hired to do, right? Because it's your testimony that Secreto Garcia, Mr. Garcia, hired you to commit this murder, not to be your tag along, that he still paid you the amount of money that he told you that he'd pay you at the beginning, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So he didn't tell you, hey, listen, I thought you were going to actually do the murder, and I had to do it, so I'm going to give you, man, I'll give you 10 stacks for two rides, right? Yeah. So you got $35,000 for two rides from Miami to Tallahassee, yes, right? Sir. Right? Yes, sir. When you find a good stopping point, Mr. Sanders, I can stop right I now. I think the jury's probably had enough for the day. Yes, Judge. <laughs> when, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say it's stop right this moment. Just uh, uh, absolutely. If you point. think the jury's done for the day, we'll, we'll pick back up tomorrow. My pleasure. So it's a decent. That's fine. Point. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I think probably reach a point where 8.45 tomorrow. We'll see.
Eight thirty. Just uh, please. Not. We don't want June. Will you please spell? Why the hell did it go to June? No. Uh, no. We gotta go back to the playlist. While I set this up, let me just say again, thanks everyone for being here. Thanks for all the new folks. We really appreciate you spending the time as we do this rewatch, well, as we do this watch of all of uh, Luis Rivera's testimony. So that was the first two hours. You'll, this is why I said this is going to be a two-day thing. And honestly, we might not finish all of Luis Rivera because I still also want to watch uh, Katie McBonawa's testimony and I want to watch her proffers. So I was planning on watching um, Lewis's testimony, then, you know, today and tomorrow, and then um, uh, Katie's Thursday and Friday. But, I mean, Lewis could take all... Look, look how much more time... Lewis was on the stand for one hour, two hour... Uh, three and a half hours, almost five, six. Seven, he's almost on the stand for seven hours. Uh, because he got caught. He got caught in the Edel Scum's web. All right, so I think we are here right now. Now, how many recordings are you planning to actually attempt to play for the jury? Sam. Between the entire underlying materials. Um, it does not prohibit the underlying materials being as well as text messages. Other demonstratives that is cross examination. We'll do it at the end of um, McBanna was cross examination, and we'll do it at the end of the redirect section of the <coughs> send the jury out and give you a minus what it is. Or those three. But yesterday was Sergeant Corbett a part of the record? Court exhibit. And we're back. Mr. Rivera, good morning. Good morning. I've got up here on the screen. Did you see that, sir? Yes, sir. I've got up on the screen phone records that have been entered into evidence as government's exhibit 128. There's a portion right here. If you can read that, his eyes are a whole lot better than mine. So you can't, can you can't it. blow that up a little bit. I think there's a knob there I've seen him use. <coughs> it's through yeah. the laptop. Uh, okay. All right. The government asked you this on, on direct examination yesterday, and I just want to confirm that your phone number, or one of your two phone numbers, was 305-570-8153. You recall that, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. And what's already been entered into evidence is government's exhibit 126, I'm sorry, 128, are the specifics that at and has and that they document and they keep with regards to your phone activity, sir. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. And your phone activity that's documented in this state's exhibit, it includes phone phone calls as well as as well as text messages. Are you aware of that? Yes, sir. You indicated yesterday that you were unable to read and write. Is that correct? Yes, sir. From the month of May of 2014 till October of 2014, with phone number 305-570-8153, were you aware that you participated in, in 7,885 text messages back and forth? Yes, sir. And you'll agree with me a text message is a nonverbal communication? You can um, talk to the phone and it'll, it'll spit it out for you. 
and that's your testimony that that's what you did in every single text message? Yes, sir. I had an iPhone. And about what about receiving text messages? They were also voicemails. That's your testimony? Yeah, they read it out to you. And you indicated also that you were attempting to get your GED, but we interrupted your, your education on, on, uh, yes, sir. in your testimony yesterday. In 2016, while in federal custody, did you take any classes with regards to reading and writing? I've been doing that my whole life, though. I'll tell you that. So you've been taking classes to read and write your whole life. Isn't it true that in 2016, while in federal custody, as part of the federal program, you receive passing grades with regards to reading and writing courses? You get, I get help. I got a tutor. So you didn't really answer my question. I, just, I, I see that you had a tutor, but the answer is yes, correct? You received passing grades yes, in reading and writing. Yes, sir. I had a tutor. And yesterday, when the government asked you to read a document, your testimony under oath was that you can't read and write, correct? I can't. So let's go back to what we were talking about yesterday with regards to your June 4th trip. And that's the trip that you took in a Nissan, um, I believe it was Center, correct? I guess so. No, sir. But in the July trip, you did rent the Toyota Prius, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And it was your testimony yesterday that you rented it while Mr. Garcia was around the corner waiting for you outside of the, the rental place, correct? Yes, sir. Before you, why don't, why don't we let the technician handle that okay. instead of you switch to the Elmo type mm -hmm. function? Your name right here? Yes, sir. Where it says renter's name? Yes, sir. You didn't write the name of the, where the unit number is, correct? What unit? Right next to it, to the right, where it says unit number. You didn't mistakenly put your name. Where it says unit number, you put your name where it says name, correct? Yes, sir. All right, that's because you read the word name and you knew to write the, your name next. No, to I asked the guy, what do I write my name and everything? He told me to fill it out right here. This what you put your name and your um, address. So all this was at the assistance of somebody else, correct? Yes, sir. my name. What does it say? Louis Rivera. You can't read this, this whole thing? My name, Louis Rivera. Your name, so it says my name is Louis Rivera? Yeah. It's like a third grade level. <clears throat> Yes, sir. At that time, I need it. I'm taking classes now to learn how to read and write. When you took your final exam in your GED level course in federal prison, was your tutor there with you when you passed? Yes, Did sir. Did he take your exam with you? He was right next to me. Yes, sir. You can do it on your own? No, I can't. And it's your testimony that you asked 
the person at the uh, budget in to read the document so you can fill out exactly where you need to Yes, sir, I asked him. On the Ju June 4th trip, did you ever indicate that Sigfredo drove the whole way? June 16th. The June 4th trip, have you ever previously said that the person that was driving the entire trip was Sigfredo Garcia? He rode halfway and I rode the other half. Have you ever indicated in previous statements that he, that he was the only person that drove? Yes, sir. Okay. And today was the first time when the prosecution showed you that you actually got the ticket that your testimony was that you drove the second half, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And isn't it also true that in other statements that you've given, you indicated that you received the ticket on the July 14th trip, correct? Yes, sir. So let's talk about June 4th. Had you previously testified that you, that you arrived in Tallahassee in the early morning time? Yes. All right. And your previous testimony had been that you'd arrived around 9 or 10 in the morning, correct? Maybe earlier? Yeah, I said that. Okay. And that your previous testimony was that when you got there that you kept partying, right, for a little bit? Yes, sir. Okay. And then you guys went to sleep for about an hour before you headed out, correct? I don't remember that. I said an hour. I, but I you went remember. to sleep for a little bit, correct? Probably. So, arrived in Tallahassee in the early morning hours, kept drinking and doing cocaine, and then slept for a little bit before you left to, uh, to go to Mr. Markell's house, correct? Yes, sir. And you'll agree with me that when the government showed you your travel citation, in Gainesville, about 250 miles away, multiple hours away, at 9 a.m. How far a. away, the... Mr. Sangata? I'm sorry? How far away? About Let's stop misleading the witness, please. That's well, not accurate. Okay. From Gainesville to Tallahassee, right? It's, a, it's quite a drive, correct? Yes, sir. <clears throat> More than 100 miles, if you recall? I don't know, sir. So between Gainesville and Tallahassee, multiple hours and the citations at 9 12 a.m correct yes sir and your testimony changed and your timeline changed yesterday when the prosecution showed you the ticket is that correct i don't know about my time change but your timeline my timeline yes because you'll agree with me beforehand you said that you got here in the early morning time correct yes sir all right now, you received the citation at 912, and Gainesville's at least 100 miles, as, as you indicated. It's, a, it's quite a drive from Gainesville to Tallahassee, you'll agree, so. correct? Right. So you'll agree with me that you did not arrive in the early morning time. You were in Gainesville at, in the early morning time, right? Yes, sir. You also indicated on direct examination that... Uh, Mr. Garcia never used any kind of uh, navigation technology on his phone, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So it's your testimony that you got to a, and, and it's also been your testimony that you've never come to Tallahassee before, correct? I've never been to Tallahassee. And that Mr. Garcia at no point utilized any kind of electronic media to help him get around in Tallahassee, right? He never used any electronic but we did stop in the store. And you got a map. Yes, sir. And you said that he looked at it once and didn't look at it again, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So your testimony is that Mr. Garcia <coughs> looked at a map once and never looked at it again. Yes, sir. Is Tallahassee like Miami in terms of how the streets are, like avenues and streets, like numbers, and, and, and like how you can go? I'm going up from... 88th Street to 157th Street. They don't have that here, do they? I don't think so. And you also testified that you purchased a gun, right? Yes, sir. And that you purchased bullets. 
correct? Yes, Let's sir. Think of that. We're not going to repeat everything you did yesterday. I think we did it two or three times yesterday. That's enough. Move on. When you get to the hotel room, the first time, you said that you had somebody purchase the room for you, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And the reason why you would do that was because you wanted to potentially hide. You didn't want to leave any kind of footprint that you were in Tallahassee, right? Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And that's because, according to your testimony, your best friend tells you several hours into a trip that it's not a robbery, it's a homicide. Yes, sir. Would you consider that misleading? What do you mean by misleading? Right. So your testimony has been, and you've proffered to this jury, that he's somebody that you've grown up with, and he's one of your best friends, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So you'll agree with me that your testimony in court is that he didn't tell you the purpose of the trip, right? He didn't tell me at the beginning. Right. Well, that's what I'm talking about. To get you to go on the trip, he didn't tell you the purpose of it, right? Yes, sir. But he did offer you money. Yes, he did. And it was your testimony yesterday that the second day that you were there, it you didn't feel like going forward with the murder, correct? Repeat that question again, please. No problem. It was your testimony yesterday that... I believe you said because you're not going to kill somebody because he has just because he has kids and that you don't know the man. Something like that, but you recall saying that, right? Yes. Okay. And based on that statement that you guys called off the the uh, the purpose of your trip and left Tallahassee, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And it's your testimony that you were the driving force behind calling this off and leaving Tallahassee? Uh, well, it was nothing to do with nothing to be around there for, so we left. Okay, so let, let me kind of let me ask a few questions about that. You indicated that Mr. Garcia had been paid, and you saw cash in his pocket, correct? Yes, sir. And you said it was between two and five thousand dollars, right? Yes, sir. And you got there on June fourth in the morning, right? Yes, sir. And between June fourth in the morning and what time did you guys leave on the fifth? I don't. I don't remember the time. Roughly. What, was I don't it remember nighttime? the time, sir. Was it nighttime? <clears throat> I don't remember the time. Okay. Do you remember if it was light or dark outside? I can't remember. Whose idea was it to leave? Both of us. Okay. Had, according to you, had Mr. Garcia run through all the money that he'd bought? Yeah, we were low on cash. Okay. And you also said that he'd given you some money from his pocket, correct? Yes, sir. You'd also said that you had bought your own a substantial amount of narcotics during the trip, correct? Yes, sir. And you also said that Mr. Uh, Garcia had purchased additional narcotics, correct? Yes, sir. How much money would you say that he had spent on, on narcotics? I ain't no telling right now. I've been a long time. Okay, well, I can't can remember. You, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Mr. Mr. Rivera, can you guess the night? I said, ain't no telling. I can't remember how much money we spent, but we spent, uh, we spent money. Okay, well, what's your definition of money? I'm the map. I'm the map. I'm the map. I'm the map. Three two hundred dollars Okay. So, as someone that has experience in the drug trade, right? Yes. Two or three hundred dollars would be maybe another eight ball, right? Maybe like two or three. Two or three more eight balls. So you're at about 15 grams of cocaine for a 36 hour trip, according to you, right? Probably. So two to three hundred dollars on drugs. How much was the room? A hundred bucks? Yeah, I don't remember. Okay. Does that sound about right? Let's just, let's be very generous. Let's say a hundred bucks. I can't tell you, I don't remember. All right. It was a motel though, right? It wasn't like a, it wasn't the W or a five-star hotel. It was a hotel. It can be one night for $60, for two nights it can be 120 And you guys stayed depends. there one night, right? June 4th. And you left June 5th, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So one night at a hotel, let's say seven, uh, between 50 and 100 bucks. Sound about right? Yeah. Okay. And you guys ate at Hooters, right? 
Yes, sir. Ate and drank at Hooters. You didn't want to be seen, correct? <clears throat> yes, sir. Yeah, you went to a known restaurant, right? Yes, sir. And you said that you guys were there for multiple hours, correct? Yes, sir. Were you wearing a hat? Yes, sir. You were wearing a hat? Yes, sir. Were you wearing sunglasses? I don't remember. You didn't have the mask on at Hooters, did you? No. No, right? Okay. So, you're in public being seen in Tallahassee for multiple hours, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You, you and Mr. Garcia have purchased and consumed, according to you, multiple ounces, I mean almost a dozen, I'm sorry, multiple grams of cocaine, correct? Yes, sir. And you're, I assume, drinking substantially at this point, correct? Yes. After you leave Hooters, where do you go? Back to the room? Yeah. <laughs> now, <clears throat> what time in the morning do you leave to start uh, your surveillance the next day? Is that Friday? I'm sorry? And then the murder day? No. I'm talking, we're talking about the June trip today, sir. All right. What time do you leave? In the morning. Yes, sir. What yeah. time? Do you remember? Like seven or eight around there. Was this, had you checked out with, of the hotel? When you left in the morning? I don't remember. Did you remember? Checkout's usually around 11 a.m., right? Yes, sir. Okay. So that morning, before, you'll agree with me that you hadn't decided whether or not anything was going to happen that day, right? Your plan was you were going to go kill Dan Markell that day, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So you would planned to go commit this murder. And you weren't sure whether or not it was going to happen, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So did you check out of the hotel, or did you keep the hotel for another day? I can't remember we checked out or not. I cannot remember. Okay. So then you drive over to Mr. Markell's house, correct? Yes, sir. To the area, and you conducted surveillance, right? Yes, sir. And then you, you followed him to the daycare center, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And then you lost him, right? Yes. Did you conduct any additional surveillance that day, or did you call it quits? I don't know if we in the... Okay, I can't remember. You indicated to the jury on direct examination that... It appeared that on that second day that you felt that this was the wrong thing to do and you didn't want to be involved in killing somebody that you didn't know, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you'll also agree with me that you realized that Mr. Garcia, according to your testimony, wanted you to be the shooter in this case, correct? Yes, sir. And, a result of, and as a result of that, you were going to be paid $35,000, correct? Yes, sir. Now, you were actually paid $37,000, correct? Yes, sir. So you were paid more than you were originally told, right? Yes, sir. And as we indicated yesterday, your testimony is that you didn't do the job that you were hired to do. You simply were, in essence, like a chauffeur, correct? Yes, sir. Are you on medica are, are you on any medication right now? No, sir. None? Not at all. Were you on any prescribed medication 
at the time of the June or the July trip? No, sir. Give me one second, Dave. You may. Diagnosed as being bipolar? Yes, sir. What about schizophrenic? Yes, sir. On the June 5th surveillance that you conducted of Dan Markell, when you said he went to the daycare, did you see him drop the kids off at the daycare? Yes, sir. And so he was alone at that time, correct? Because you saw him drop off the kids? Yes, sir. Now, you indicated that after you, you guys, after you called off uh, the purpose of your, of your trip, you drove back to Miami, correct? Yes, sir. And it's been your testimony that from June 5th, because that's when you got back to Miami, right? June 5th, the next day? Yes, sir. The next night? June 5th, that there was no communication or no discussion with you and Mr. Garcia about anything else until, I believe, the 14th of July? Yes, sir. Would it be, would it be a fair statement to make that <laughs> You made it clear, according to your testimony, that you did not want to participate in this uh, in this job to Mr. Garcia, correct? Yes, sir. And then during your direct examination, actually, you kind of went to substantial detail to tell the members of the jury how you felt that this was an inappropriate thing to do, correct? Yes, sir. Right. Yet, when Mr. Garcia according to your testimony, calls you, you go rent a car immediately, right? Yes, sir. You didn't tell him, oh, man, don't you remember what I told you June, June 5th? I don't want to be down with this, right? You didn't say that, did you? No, that's my best friend. Okay. Well, but he was also your best friend on June 5th, right? Until I'm dead, I'm gone, I guess. Right. So he was your best friend on June 5th as well, the same day that you said, no, nah, I don't want to do this, and in essence, you guys left, right? Yes, sir. A m five weeks later, he tells you, let's ride, and you immediately go and rent a car in your name, yes? Yes, sir, I did. How many guns did you take the second time up? One. One, correct? Talk about for the murder. Yes, sir. For, uh, I just want to make murder? sure where we at. I'm sorry? I just want to make sure where we at. So, you'll agree with me that on the trip, on the June trip, you were extremely cautious about not leaving any kind of fingerprint, okay, or any kind of trace that you were in Tallahassee, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yet, on the second trip, you rented a car, right? Yes, sir. And whose name did you rent the car in? My name. Whose hotel did you rent the hotel room in? It says my name on it, right? Were you taking your medication on that day? No, you weren't, right? You weren't no. taking any medication that Not day? Not at all. Just cocaine. So you consider cocaine to be medication? That's medication. Have you been co taking cocaine for medication for a long time? I've been doing cocaine since the age of 15 years old, sir. And how old are you now? 36. Would you say that you do cocaine on a daily basis or did cocaine on a daily basis? No, once in a blue. Not like that. Not every day. 
When you say once in a blue, what does that mean? Maybe on a weekend, maybe in a party. So 50 times, let's just be conservative. Once a week for, there's 52 weeks in a year, correct? Uh, yes. I, right? I, I mean, I, that's not a trick question. There's 52 weeks in a year. You're aware of that, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you're saying that you did cocaine once a week, so that's 50 times a year, right? Yes, sir. For 20 years? Yeah, I'm 36. Okay. So about 1,000 times? Maybe, yeah. Now, have you ever testified that you believe, well, who do you believe convinced Mr. Garcia to take this job? His wife, Katie. Have you ever said that one of the reasons that Mr. Garcia participated in this murder for hire was that Katie McBanawa indicated that she would get back together with him if he did so. Have I ever said that? I don't remember. He did say that. Do you remember giving a recorded statement to law enforcement on October 4th, 2016? Yeah. And during that time... Because I'm going to fuck with you, buddy! Yesterday, we're going to be buddies! We're going to be pals! We're going to... Jan, thank you so much. We good to see you, Jan. We've missed you. Capri Sun's out in the chat. Jan's a bow. Jan's been a bow for a long time, but she just re-upped on the channel. Thank you so much, Jan. We've missed you. Good to see you. You were accompanied by your attorney, correct? Yes, sir. As well as Detective Isom and Special Investigator Sanford, correct? Yes, sir. Give me a minute, sir. I gotta get Prudence. I don't know what the hell she's eating. I'll be right back. Prudence, leave it. Come here. What do you got? Oh, you gave her a treat? Oh, all right. <laughs> Thanks. Testimony today, sir. May I continue, Judge? You might. Thank you. So it's your testimony today, sir, that you don't recall whether or not you indicated... We're not going to repeat his testimony over and over again, Mr. Sangaday. Move on. Will you agree with me that you believe that Ms. Bagbanawa was a driving force in convincing Mr. Garcia to commit this murder? That's, yes, that's your testimony, correct? Yes, sir. It was also your testimony yesterday that immediately after the purported... After, the, after you, you committed the murder, that... Mr. Garcia called Miss McBanella, correct? That he called her? Well, that's the first call he made after the murder, right? That was the first call. Okay. And you actually testified that while he was sitting next to you in the Prius, you could hear the conversation, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And during that conversation, I believe your testimony was something to the, to the effect is it's done, right? Yes, sir. All right. And then it was followed up with... We're getting our money the next day, correct? Yes, sir. Nothing about, he didn't say anything to the effect of, you didn't hear, I did it, we're going to be back together now, right? No. 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 He didn't tell Katie, listen, I did what you asked me to do, we're, I want to be back together with you, correct? Not at all, so he handled the phone, and that's it. Right, and the, and the only contents of the conversation was, was, was with regards to money, right? Yes, sir. Page 49. And you'll agree with me that prior to that, you indicated the driving force behind this was him getting back together with Katie, right? Repeat that question again? Sure, no problem. I just asked you, wasn't she extremely influential in having him do this, correct? Yes, sir. You also, and you agree with me that, you're, that you believe that Ms. Begbanawa was extremely influential in decisions with regards to Mr. Garcia, correct? Yes, sir. My client was crazy about, about Ms. Begbanawa, correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. In love with her. He still is. You'll also agree with me that at the time of this situation, Ms. McManawa wasn't dating my client. 
No, not at all. She was they dating. Were they she, were on and off. On and off. But at the time that this took place, who was she dating? The dentist. You keep calling him the dentist. You know his name, though, right? Yeah, I just found out. Charlie. Charlie. Now, there was a time where you were with Mr. Garcia and you went to a restaurant in Brickell, right? Yes, sir. And it was at this time where you saw Miss Bagmanawa with, with Dr. Adelson, correct? Charlie Adelson, the yes, dentist. Sir. Yes, sir. Have you ever testified that you'd never seen Charlie Adelson? I ain't never seen him a day in my life. That day we went to the restaurant, I seen Katie. I don't know who he was. As, as someone that, well, let me ask you this question. As someone that is a participant, someone that, that deals drugs, you don't deal drugs on the corner, correct? No. You deal drugs to people that you know, right? Objection, yes. Your Honor. Sustain. Did you know Katie McManaw? Yes, sir. Were you aware that Mr. Garcia was unhappy with the fact that she was dating Charlie Adelson? Of course he was. Would you say that Mr. Garcia liked Dr. Adelson? Like him? Right. No. Would you say that it would probably be the opposite, that he disliked him? Yeah, he disliked that man. He disliked that man? Yeah, just like he didn't like that man. Right. He didn't like him. He was angry with him, right? Yes, sir. Anybody would have having a relationship, right? Correct, but I'm talking about Mr. Garcia. Yes, sir. Would it be, would it be fair to say that he was unhappy with her relationship with the dentist, correct? Yes, sir. With Dr. Adelson, correct? Charlie yes, Adelson, right? Yes, sir. Would it be fair to say that you, you'd be able to see the anger in his face, correct? Of course. You would see that he would be sad, correct? Yes, sir. Yet it's your testimony <laughs> that Mr. Garcia agreed to do an act that the Adelsons wanted, right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Judge, can I get a minute? No. It's your testimony that you'd never seen Charlie Adelson, correct? Yes, sir. So you would deny selling drugs to Charlie Adelson? Objection. Sustained. Did you ever sell drugs to Charlie Adelson? Sustained. The objection is sustained. Can we approach that bar now? Move on. <laughs> I love how he just tells him no. Move on. He's, judge is done with this man. Have third parties ever elicited you to purchase narcotics for other people? Objection. Sustained. You're aware that Mr. Garcia was involved in a motorcycle accident, correct? Yes, sir. And you're also aware that he received a settlement as a result of this motorcycle accident, correct? A settlement? A settlement. He got paid. No, I don't, I don't remember that. You don't remember that? <coughs> Are you aware? Or You indicated that you would have almost daily contact with Mr. Garcia, correct? Yes, sir. You agree with me that one of the things that he did to make money would be to buy and sell cars, correct? Yes, sir. Do you remember how many cars he's bought and sold? No, not at all. Would it be more than one? Yeah. 
More than five? Who cares? Oh, my God. Shit, I, don't remember. I think it's time for 1.25. Trevor showed you a picture of uh, 1986. Monte Carlo, a purple one, correct? Yes, sir. How much did he pay for that car? Do you remember? All right, folks, I'm going 1.25 speed because we're never going to finish all his testimony, even today and tomorrow. Then I'm winning $3,000. So around $3,000. And how much did he pay for that motorcycle? Like 38, four grand on there. You don't remember? Like 38 or four grand between. And it's your testimony that he gave you 37000 out of 100 Yes, sir. Did you deposit any of that money in the bank? Nope. Did you declare any of that money on your taxes? Nope. Do you know how the money was given to you? Cash. Cash? Yes, sir. $100 bills, right? Yes, sir. Staples together? Yes, sir. And it was your testimony that the day after the murder that my client and Ms. McManawa were at Jessica's house, correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> did Jessica know about the murder? No, sir, not at all. So they did the money drop off at her house, right? Yes, sir. So in essence, at that point, you agree with me, Jessica now knew what was going on. Not at all. You just showed up and you got, would you normally get large amounts of cash like that? No, sir. How much would you make on a when you would do one of your jacks? It depends. 10, 15, 20,000? Yes, sir. You don't consider that to be a large amount of cash? Yes. What's the most money you've ever made doing a robbery? I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. Is this the most amount of money you've ever made? And what? Objection, Your Honor. I, I've ruled objection to that question. Is this the most amount of money you've ever made in one setting? No, sir. No, sir? Okay. So this is not something that Jessica wrote. This is your wife, right? Your living girlfriend, your baby mama? Yes, sir. Okay. So did she ever ask you where you got these, the, this money? She never asked me nothing. And that's because she knows that you have a code of silence, right? Yes, sir. Yet you exposed her, according to your testimony, to this cash exchange. Was that normal? Repeat that again? Sure. You exposed her to this money exchange. Right? What do you mean by exposure? She was there. She was there. Right? She never seen the money, though. She never, so they gave you a, a, a paper bag? Yes, sir. Okay. And she didn't see you taking... I mean, the, the $100 bills were stapled together, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So did she see you taking the staples out of everything? No, sir. No. Not you went to all. a separate room? Nope. I left, I left them in my car. Grabbed the money and left. Did you give any of this money to Jessica Rodriguez? I gave you a few dollars, but she didn't know where it came from. She didn't. No. Obviously, you don't want to get Jessica in trouble, right? She don't know nothing. Why would I get in trouble? Well, well th I'm just asking in general. You wouldn't want her to get in trouble, correct? I never tell her nothing. Did Jessica? Okay, so you took a plea in this in, in this case to 19 years, correct? Yes, sir. But you're not going to serve 19 years in Florida State Prison, right? Maybe, maybe not. Well, your plea. Well, the answer is not because your plea was to 19 years to run at the same time as your 151-month sentence in federal court, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So, let's do the math here. <clears throat> 19 times 12 is 228. Minus 151 is 77. Divided by 12 is 6.4 years. So you're going to spend six, less than six and a half years in Florida State Prison, correct? If I do all my time in the feds. If I don't, I got to do more time. And state. Your plea agreement, what we're talking about, not whether or not you get additional time or less time, but what you've agreed with the government, that's what I'm talking about, okay? Yes, sir, I'm okay. just explaining. Okay, well, I'm asking what your plea agreement is. Your plea agreement is what you agreed to with the government, correct? Yes, sir, I said 19. 19. So as we agreed, did you sit down and go over your plea agreement with your attorney? You did that, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and he read... All the, the portions of the plea agreement to you, correct? Yes, sir. And you began plea negotiations with the government 
probably in September of 2016? Yeah. And you were arrested or you were charged, because you were already in prison, right? Yes, sir. So you were charged in, was it May or June of 2016? I think it was June. It was June, right? Because you remember that law enforcement came to federal prison to talk to you in May of 2016, correct? Yeah. And when they first asked you about this, you'll agree with me that you denied any involvement, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And then from June to September, about three months, right? Yeah. You decided to become a cooperating witness with the, the state court, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Did they make, did the government make you the 19 year offer before they spoke to you? Did, they, did, you, did they make me? Let me, let, me, let me ask the question, sir. Did the government come and tell you, we're going to offer you 19 years, or did they sit down and talk to you and then make you that offer? No, they didn't sit down and talk to me at all. So at no point did you have any communication with the prosecutor? At all. That communication went through your attorney, correct? Yes, sir. Prior to the October 4th statement that you gave that's videotaped, yes, sir. did you have communication with law enforcement that was not memorialized by video? Say that again? Sure. Did you... You've seen the video, right? The October 4th video? I ain't really had no, um, I ain't seen nothing. I was in a box. So I never got to see no videos or none of that. Well, let me ask it this way. Did, was there ever a time, okay, prior to the recording, where law enforcement asked you questions that went through your attorney, okay, and he came and discussed those questions with you, and then you told your attorney the answers. And then he would go back and tell the police. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so your attorney acted as like a mediator, okay, between law enforcement and you, right? Well, law enforcement would, would be with me in there, and I talked with my lawyer. That's, that's not what I asked you. But you got I, me confused, man. Um, come back. Okay. Law enforcement... Was there a time where you were in separate rooms with law enforcement and you were alone with your attorney? No, the law enforcement, he was in the room. Your attorney was in the room? Yes, sir. Okay. And then the police would come and talk to your attorney and then he would come alone with you and have discussions, correct? No, the cop was in the, in the room as well. Okay. Were you, were you at the open table or were you isolated and having a private conversation with your lawyer? No, it was an open table. My lawyer, well, if I have a, a conversation with my lawyer, it's between me and my lawyer. But the, the detective was there. Okay. Do you remember giving a deposition on January 31st, 2018? You remember me taking your deposition? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And do you remember when I asked you, where prior to the recording, law enforcement... Page. page number, I apologize, 119 lines 11 to 15. <laughs> where I asked you, where prior to the recording, law enforcement asked questions that went through your attorney, and he came and discussed them with you, and then you told your attorney the answers, and he would go back and tell the police officers, and you answered, yes, sir. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. Improper impeachment. Overruled. You remember that? Yeah. Okay. So what I asked you was, because what I asked you in that question, it appears that the answer is, well, strike that. Was this the same day as the recording? Do you remember? What recording? Okay. The October 4th recording. Do you recall if this is the same day? That's, yeah. And you'll agree with me that there are portions of your interaction, according to your own words, that were not memorialized on video, correct? That it wasn't recorded? Right. I don't know if it was recorded or not. Did they tell you at some point we're turning the, the camera on? I believe every time I talk to any detective, it's getting recorded. Now, between end of September and your statement, you took a ride down I-75 with the police, correct? Yes, sir. And during your, and the purpose of this was to see if you could retrieve the firearm that was used in this case, correct? Yes, sir. And you'll agree with me that on that day, you spent multiple hours driving up and down I-75, correct? Yes, sir. How many miles would you say that you went from Tallahassee 
all the way south. A lot of miles. Right? Did you get to Tampa? Probably past Tampa. Past Tampa. There's a real long bridge that you went over, correct? Yeah. Okay. Was that multiple hours? Yeah. Did they feed you? Yeah. You didn't eat prison food, right? No. They got you some McDonald's or something? Yes. And you actually had them stop at an underpass, which we, you believed was where the firearm was, was left, correct? Yes, sir. And law enforcement actually found a firearm there, didn't they? I guess. You guess. I mean, they showed you. We found a gun, right? No, no nobody showed me nothing. Didn't they? T <laughs> but you know that they found a firearm there, right? I heard they found a gun. Did they show you that gun to see if that you recognize the gun to be no, the gun sir. in this case? No, sir. Is that a, did you just take law enforcement to a known dumping ground for Latin kings to dump firearms? I'm Latin king. You're a Latin king. Why you keep saying Latin kings? It ain't got nothing to do with this. You're wrong. You're wrong, man. This ain't got nothing to do with no Latin king. So it got to do with me, Garcia. No Latin kings. So you're not answering my question. My no. question Ask was... Ask him a straightforward question. Let's I said no. I'm sorry? Ask him another question. Ask him a straightforward question. Not an argumentative one, please. Give me just one second, guys. I just received it. Who sent this letter? I did. And does that have your signature on it? Yes, sir. And who did you send this letter to? Mr. Georgia. Is this letter in the same condition that it was when you originally sent it? Probably. Does it look any different? Does it look altered in any way? No. Judge, at this time, the defense moves was previously marked as. Defense exhibit three into evidence. Say. Uh, just my general objection to them introducing evidence during my case in chief, Judge. No specific objection. No, Your Honor. Let me see the exhibit. Yes, Judge. Okay. Mr. Rivera, that says November third, two thousand sixteen, right? The, the numbers up there are consistent back to the eighty cents letter. Yes, sir. And that letter is addressed to Ms. Kaplan. Yes, sir. This was a, a letter that you intended to send, correct? Yes, sir. And whose signature is this on? It's mine. And it, it says in, in, in this letter that since you made a plea deal with the government and you told them everything they wanted to know and you helped break the case, right? <coughs> correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, Penny. It's not Does time yet, Penny. I'm showing you what's been previously marked as government position. Garcia's exhibit four. Do you recognize that, that document? Yes, sir. Is that a letter that you wrote to Ms. Kaplan? Yes, sir. Is that letter in, in the same or substantially the same condition as it was when you first sent it? Yes, sir. Is that your signature on the bottom right hand corner? Yes, sir. Judge, so at this time, I move what's previously been marked as Garcia's exhibit four in that one. Any specific objection? Yes, Your Honor. Hearsay and cumulative. Let me see the letter. Yes, Judge. About 10 more minutes, it looks like for this part. It's a tattoo on his neck, Patricia. Somebody wrote the letter and I rewrote it. So that's your actual handwriting? Yeah. And in this letter, what's the first sentence say? Somebody wrote for me, sir. Right. 
I can't read it. You can't read it? No, I had somebody write it for me. He's the one that told me about it. And he wrote it for me. And I just rewrote it and sent it out. You don't need to read it. It's in evidence. Move on, Mr. Sangadet. Well, move on. <laughs> I said, move on. Yes, sir. We've done this. Enough. Put the letter down. Judge is so mad. <laughs> you testified yesterday that as a result of your cooperation, your life would be in danger, correct? Yes, sir. That as a result of you cooperating with the government in this case, that they were going to kill you, right? They're trying it right now. I'm sorry? They're trying to do it right now. But you're here, right? I'm talking to you, yes. And those two letters that you sent this Kappelman, you're asking to be put back in general population, correct? Yes, sir. Out of the shoe. Out of protective custody. Yes, sir. Mr. Rivera, who wrote that letter for you? That inmate. Do you remember the inmate's name? No, sir. That inmate was in, was he in your, was he in, I assume he was in the shoe in November of 2016? Yes, sir. Get out of here. Get out of there. Do you remember what pod you were in? G pod. G pod, okay. <laughs> On July 14th, 2014, you rented the Prius and came up to Tallahassee. We're not going to start repeating testimony, Mr. Sangley. I Go to something new. Where did you stay? We've done that. Move on. Something new, Mr. Sangley. On the day in question, what time did you start following Mr. Markel? It's something yeah. new, I said, Mr. Sangley. Do you remember what time you got to Premier Fitness? Repeat that again? Sure. You, Mr. Markel went to the gym, right? Yes, sir. Do you know what time he got to the? What time you got to the gym? No. Were you following Mr. Markel from the daycare to the gym? Yes, sir. And it's your testimony that you were in the car with Mr. Garcia? Yes, sir. You weren't in the car with another Latin king? No, sir. You bring this Latin king back and forth, man. You got my life in jeopardy right now. Just because, and yesterday you told me about the same thing. Where's my location at? My life is in jeopardy even worse now. Because now they know where I'm at. And that's protected custody. Get out of there, man. So the answer to my question? He answered your question. Do you have another question, Mr. Sanger? I do. How far behind Mr. Markell were you? When he pulled into the, when he pulled into the to the gym, to the gym, yeah, to premiere. A few cars down for him. So you were, let's say, a hundred feet behind him. <coughs> like two two cars from behind him. Two cars. Would you say five seconds behind? Him? Yeah. And you pulled into the parking lot. Yes, sir. And. You testified, well, at any point did you or Sigfredo Garcia get out of the Prius? I didn't get out of the Prius at all. Did Mr. Garcia get out of, did Mr. Garcia get out of the Prius to urinate? Yes, sir. In the premier parking lot? Yes, sir. Where were you parked when you did that? Almost towards the street. By, by Bush. Was the parking lot empty or, or full? I had cars around. And by having cars around it, you mean there were a lot of cars around it? Yes, sir. And will you agree that there are people constantly coming in and out of the, out of the gymnasium? Yes, sir. And did you see someone who worked as, I don't know if they're security, but there was personnel or someone that was working on staff walking around the parking lot? I don't remember. Was it your plan that morning to commit the murder? My plan? Yes. No. Was this another surveillance day? For the murder? The day of the murder? It's That's another morning. day. I'm sorry? It's another day. Was it your plan when you woke up in the morning that that was the day you were going to commit the murder? No, it was not my plan. We woke up and went to do what we got to do. You had not called or you had not heard anybody call saying today we're going to commit the murder, correct? No. After you, Mr. Markell leaves the gym and you follow him, you pull out, when you see him pulling towards his neighborhood, you pull into another direction, correct? Yes, sir. Because you don't want him to be seeing you behind him, correct? Yes, sir. And you pull up 
in the 2116 Trescott Ave, right behind this car that's in the garage? Yes, sir. And that's where Mr. Markell's killed? Yes, sir. And it's your testimony that you are not the shooter? Yes, sir. Is there anybody else that could testify to who the shooter is? But that's not an appropriate question, Mr. Sanganet. Is there anybody else in the car with you? Garcia's in the car with me. Anybody other than Garcia? Nobody else. So you'll agree that you're the only person that can testify? Let's test go sidebar, please. <laughs> this is the part where the judge calls him closer to say, stop being a jabroni. What the hell are you doing, man? Let y'all step out. 15. Uh, I was hoping we could find a stopping point, but I guess we're going to need to take a break. We'll let y'all step out. And that's the end of this testimony. Uh, I think we might end the day here. Well, we'll keep going. I don't know if we'll finish this. <coughs> Oops, I clicked on the wrong one, the same one again. We want part four. Everybody be seated, please. Thank you. Can you read me my last question? Sorry. Actually, you know what? I'm fine, Madam Corporal. Thank you. I apologize. I remember where I am. May I proceed, Judge? You may. Thank you. Mr. Rivera, you were charged with first-degree murder, correct? Yes, sir. And the government had sought to ask a jury to put you to death, correct? Yes, sir. You're seeking the death penalty, right? Yes, sir. And were you aware that one of the aggravators that a jury can consider in determining the death penalty is gang affiliation? Repeat that question, sure, sir, please. Sure, no problem. Were you aware that one of the aggravating factors that a jury can consider in determining whether or not they're going to choose life or death is whether or not someone has gang affiliation? Did your lawyers discuss that with you? I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay. But as a result of your negotiated plea, you received a charge of second-degree murder, not first-degree murder, correct? Yes, sir. And obviously, your exposure to the death penalty was no longer something you had to be concerned about with regards to this prosecution, correct? Yes, sir. Judge, at this point, I'll tender the witness with the right to recall Mr. Rivera. And he's done. It's a Festivus miracle. What's that? If I may set up the court. Sure. Mr. Rivera. The court, counsel, counsel. Mr. Rivera, you've known Sigbredo Garcia since you guys were kids, right? Yes, ma'am. I believe you said on direct examination yesterday you've known him since you were five to six years old. Isn't that true? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. You went to the same school as Sigbredo Garcia, correct? Yes, ma'am. What school is that? Biscayne Elementary. Biscayne Elementary. Mm -hmm. And then did you end up going to, is it high school that comes next? No, middle school. Middle school? I didn't go to school here, so I don't know. Um, so middle school, and you completed middle school? No. When did you drop out of school? I was on and off school. I was going to JMI Opportunity School. Okay, so you went to the JMI Opportunity School, mm -hmm. and what grade did you complete there? I think I was in the sixth grade over there. Okay. You also, after, were able to complete a certificate at Turner Tech in Miami, correct? Turner Tech, no. It wasn't Turner Tech? What, what, what was it? I had a Miami. What did you get your certificate in so that you could work at Coastal Masonry? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Okay, it's Turn Attack, right? Yes, I got that right. Yes, ma'am. So you are. Slide forward just a little bit, please, Mr. Rivera. Right. So you are also able to go to a secondary institution and obtain a certificate? Yes, ma'am. And that was in? Turn Attack High School. Um, William Turn Attack High School. But what was the certificate <clears throat> in? A masonry. Okay, and you had to take an exam, right? I didn't. The exam is laying blocks. Okay. You got to lay block. Now, even though you were really close with Sigfredo, you were not close with Catherine McBangle, correct? Yes, yes ma'am. It is a fair characterization that you only hung out with her because she was dating Sigfredo on and off. Yes, ma'am. Let's remember the names, please. Oh, full names. I apologize, Your Honor. Um, now, 
Catherine Mabano and Sigfredo Garcia were dating on and off for 10 years, correct? About? Yeah, about, yeah. And they had two children together. Yes, ma'am. You know about these kids. You've met them before. Yes, ma'am. One is their son, Ethan. Yes, ma'am. And then they have a daughter, Kaylee. Yes, ma'am. This is Katie McBonawa's attorney, one of her attorneys. Now, in 2013, correct me if I'm wrong, this was the time that Catherine McBanwell kicked Sigfredo Garcia out of her house. Does that sound about right? I don't remember. Okay. This was a time when she was living with her kids and her mother in North Bay Village. Sound familiar? Yes, ma'am. So that would be around a correct assessment, 2013? I don't remember the year. Okay. But you do remember that big breakup where she kicked him out? Yeah. Okay. And even though Fredo Garcia was broken up with Catherine McBanwell, he didn't, uh, he didn't abandon his kids, did he? Never. Never. Family comes first, right? Always. Always. And he would still help Catherine McBanwell take care of the kids. Of course. And that's because at that time, you remember, Catherine, was work Catherine McBanwell was working in the clubs. Yes, ma'am. You remember that? Yeah. And Sigfredo Garcia actually had to help because she was working at night. Yes, Is that right? Yes, ma'am. She needed him to watch the kids. He's a good father. He's a good father. And he would do that, right? Of course. Kids. So is it fair to say that even though they were broken up, they were always in constant communication because of the kids? Of course. Now let's talk about where Sigfredo, if you know, where Sigfredo Garcia would get his money from. Because it's fair to say he didn't have a steady job, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, at the time when there was this separation between them, he was doing a lot of cocaine, right? Yes, ma'am. And he was drinking a lot. Yes, ma'am. And this is because he was kind of messed up about the breakup, right? Yes, ma'am. And if there's something that I say that's not correct, you let me know, okay, Mr. Rivera? I will let you know. Okay. Now, isn't it true at this time that Sigfredo was selling cocaine? Yes, ma'am. How do you get paid when you're selling cocaine? How do you get paid when you're selling cocaine? Yeah, you, people don't pay you in. Jackson, check. <laughs> Mr. Rivero, now you had a job a pretty good job at Coastal Masonry, correct? Yes, ma'am. What is Coastal Masonry? It's a block, it's a block company. And you do primarily construction work, correct? 15 years, yes, ma'am. And that would be my next question. How long did you work at Coastal Masonry? 15 years straight. And you were actually working at that job when you were arrested on the federal case in 2015, correct? Yes, ma'am. Right. And you even got Sigfredo Garcia a job at Coastal Masonry, <clears throat> correct? Yes, ma'am. And this was in the time frame, correct me if I'm wrong, is in, in between the two trips? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you had to fire him. Yes, ma'am. Why did you have to fire him? Drinking on the job. And you fired him before you went to the, on, on the second trip, correct? I don't remember. You had to get time off for the second trip, correct? Yes, ma'am. You had to call your boss and ask him. Yes, he didn't have to because he wasn't working there. Yes, ma'am. Now, around the time of the June trip, the first trip is what I'm going to keep calling it, okay? So that we can keep the two separate. Sigfredo did not have a job at that time. No, ma'am, I don't think so. And at that time, Katie, like you said, was dating the dentist, is what you called him. Yes, ma'am. Right. And you knew what his name was at the time because Sigfredo Garcia told you what his name was. I think I remember his name. We, we just called him the dentist. That but was his name. The only way you could have known the name would have been from Sigfredo Garcia. He said it was the dentist. Okay. Never gave me a name. He never gave you a name. Later on in the future. All right. You recall giving a deposition in this case in March of this year in Tucson, Arizona? Yeah. Remember I was there? That's the first time we met? Yes, ma'am. Mr. DeCoste was there? Yes, ma'am. Remember the court reporter that was there? Yes, ma'am. You took down everything we said? Yes, ma'am. You swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before you gave that testimony? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The same oath that you took today, right? Yes, ma'am. I'm referring court and counsel to the March 22nd deposition, page 31. And I'm starting at line 16 down to 24. Question. Did he give you at the time any specifics with who? Answer. Yes. He told me the dentist. I forgot his name. He said his name. I'm bad with names. He said the dentist. We'll just keep it like that. Did he tell you it was our boss? Yes. You remember telling us that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And is that accurate? You told us that he did tell you at the name at the time, but you just couldn't remember. I'm bad with names. And you referred to 
him as her boss. He eventually became her boss. That's how Sigfredo would refer to him as, right? Yes, so it's common knowledge amongst everyone that knew Sigfredo Garcia and Catherine McBanwell that she was working for Charlie Adelson, the dentist. Yes, ma'am. Now, you said on cross-examination, Sigfredo Garcia was very jealous of Charlie Adelson. Yes, ma'am. He was very angry that they were dating, right? Yes, ma'am. So I want to talk to you about that incident where you were in a truck with Sigfredo Garcia. Yes, ma'am. Whose truck was that? Sigfredo. Was that a Dodge truck? Yes, ma'am. Black truck? Yes. All right. And you didn't know where you were going when he picked you up, right? No, ma'am. All of a sudden, you're parking, and you are observing Catherine McBanwell eating with someone, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Isn't it true that Sigfredo Garcia said, look at, that, look at Katie over there with the dentist? Yes, ma'am. Didn't he say, I feel like taking my truck and running these M motherfuckers over to the restaurant? Yes, ma'am. He also said, I should get this truck and just smash them and run their asses over while they're eating. Yes, ma'am. So that's fair to say that he was angry. Yes, he was. You had to talk him down. Isn't that true? Yes, ma'am. You had to stop him from running them over. I was in that truck. I was not going to do nothing like that. And they didn't even know that you guys were there. Or you don't have any indication that they knew that you were there, right? right. They didn't know if they knew we were there or not. Okay. I mean, no one jumped out the car and approached them or anything like that? No, ma'am. Now, at this time, too, when this breakup is going on, isn't it true that Sigfredo Garcia was dating who you termed as Shrimp? Shrimp, yes, ma'am. Isn't her real name Stephanie Carmona? I ain't know her real name. The other nickname is Tati, is what I you know her as? I know Tati, yeah. What does she do for a living? A like stripper. A room. A stripper. Okay. Like dance. And he started dating her, right? Yes, ma'am. And at some point, he actually moved into the, her apartment. Yes, ma'am. Where was her apartment? I must sustain the relevant objection at this point. Move on, please. Okay. And, Your Honor, it would be over my objection because there was no objection. Well, I earlier denied her relevance objection. I think it's reached a point where I agree it's become irrelevant, so I'm sustaining her objection. Now, in 2015, when the accident happened with Shrimp on the back, right? The bike accident. Yeah. Shrimp was on the bike with Sigredo Garcia, right? Yes, ma'am. And this was in January of 2015? I don't remember the month. But it was in 2015? Yeah, before I got locked up. Before you got locked up, okay. And <coughs> Catherine did not, Catherine McBano did not approve of his relationship with this woman, did she? What do you mean approve? Like, she ain't want with him? Well, yes, I mean, she wasn't happy, she wasn't okay with him dating Shrimp, was she? Um, no, I guess. Or you don't know? I don't really know, to be okay. honest. But Mr. Garcia and Shrimp were still together in 2015 because they were on the bag together. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, your daughter, you have a daughter that was born in June of 2014, correct? Yeah, Lulu. June, yeah, June 27th. And so I don't say her, your name. We can refer to her as Lulu is her nickname, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Lulu was actually born on June 27th of 2014. Yes, ma'am. That is right that smack in the middle of the two trips, right? Yes, ma'am. So it'd be fair to say that that's a good reference point for your memory, because you remember your daughter being born, right? Of course. And your daughter actually was born with a hole in her heart, right? Yes, ma'am. And she was in the hospital for a while. Yes. You were there every day. Yes. You remember that happening. Of course. All right. And of course you were there because you know how important it is to be a father to someone's kids, right? To your kids. Of course, my baby girl. All right. You don't only have one kid, do you? No, ma'am. How many do you have? I got five. All right. And you take your role as father seriously? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I would like to go over a timeline because I think this is going to assist. And this is just, I'm going to be dealing with the different statements that you've given in this case. Um, and Your Honor, I just want to make sure you can see. Okay. Okay, you ready? Now, before I go into the details of your participation in Dan Markell's execution, Let's start with where all your statements were, okay? May 27th of 2016, you were in a federal detention center at Coleman in Orlando, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. At this point, you're already sentenced to 12 years in prison on your federal case. 12 and a half. 12 and a half, okay, thank you. And you were, and this is a conviction for conspiracy, right? Yes, okay. And we'll get back to those details. But on that date, okay, Two detectives came to speak to you at Colmo, correct? Yes, ma'am. And they specifically asked you about your involvement in a homicide in Tallahassee, right? Yes, ma'am. You flat out denied knowing anything about no murder. Of course. Okay, so on 527, it's fair to say you gave no information. Yes, ma'am. Okay. They read you your rights? That day they see me, no. They did not read you your rights? 
Shit. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Does it? I mean, you know what your rights are. Of course. All right. So, but you you don't know if I just don't remember. All right. And you knew that that statement was recorded. Everything is everything is recorded. All right. And I know you say that, but just to make sure it's clear for the jury, I'm going to ask. And you need to let me know if you think it was recorded or you know it was recorded. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, did you know that on 527 it was recorded? I think everything is recorded. Okay. So it's a think. Everything is recorded. Everything is recorded. Okay. Did you see a tape recorder or anything in front of you? They had everything. Okay. They had everything. They're the FBI. So. Let's now move on to what happens next. Then after 527, you've denied everything, right? Were you then charged with the murder of Dan Markell? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You, along with Secreto Garcia, are then transferred to Leon County, where you are right now, detention facility. Yes, ma'am. To face the charges, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. And isn't it true that your warrant, and everyone's warrant, was released to the media? Yes, ma'am. Because your family called you and told you about it, right? Of course. And they spoke to you about all of the state's theory of what they thought the case was, right? Yes, ma'am. They could read it for themselves. Yeah. And Mr. Zangane brought out, you were made very well aware of the fact that the state was seeking the death penalty against you, correct? Yes, ma'am. They were trying to kill you, yes, right? Yes, Now, your case is set for trial, all right? And you are appointed a lawyer by the state. Yes, ma'am. And that would be Mr. Collins. Yes, ma'am. Now, you had two Collins representing you. Do you remember who was the primary attorney on your case? Chuck Collins. Chuck Collins. Okay. Just I want to make sure I'm referring to the correct one, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, before you took your plea, you and your lawyer went over all your evidence, right? Yes, ma'am. Because you're not going to take a plea unless you know what the evidence is against you, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And your lawyer is under an obligation to go over all of the evidence with you. Of course. He may, I don't, did he show you any videos or anything like that? No, ma'am. No? No. Okay, but you went over at least all the reports and everything that was written down. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that's because when you take a plea, courts ask, do you understand what the evidence is against you, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, so now we're moving to August 8th, okay? You signed a proffer agreement on August 8th, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, that had your signature on it, and it basically said that whatever you were going to tell the prosecution, you had immunity for it. Is that correct? I don't remember. You don't remember. Okay, so I have the document in front of me. And is it fair to say that the document, if your signature is on it, would be an accurate reflection yeah. of what it said? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move on just for now, and then we'll, we'll take that up a little later, all right? But your understanding was, I mean, let me know. You, you were just going to talk to them without any protection? Yeah. I, was gonna, I, I, I need no protection. I'm like, I wouldn't worry about protection, but now that all that came out to the media and everybody knows, I need protection. Okay. And uh, just so that while I have you on the stand, just to make sure, Your Honor, may I approach? Just for him to identify something, I'm not moving anything with evidence. You given this a number? was it's been marked as a defense exhibit. It's defense exhibit number three. Do you see that? Yes, ma'am. You see what I'm showing you? Yes, ma'am. Is this the first time you've ever seen this before? No, ma'am. Okay. This signature right here, is that your signature? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Now, let's talk about the setup on that day, all right? So you agreed to talk to the prosecution. This is August 8th, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Your lawyer was there. Yes. And you were in a room with your lawyer, right? Yes. And the prosecutor and the investigator were actually in the other room. Is it <coughs> not true? Yes, ma'am. You don't remember the questions that they asked you? No, ma'am. You don't remember the answers that you gave? No. But you do remember that there was a back and forth? Yes, ma'am. And then before you would give your responses, you discussed it with your attorney. He would then give the answer over, and then it would just kind of go back like a tennis match, right? Yes, Now, at that time on August 8th, okay, and we put question marks because you don't remember what you said and what they said, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you and the prosecutor, one thing we know, were not able to come to an agreement at that time. Yes, ma'am. That's true, right? That's true. So your case is continuing in the trial path. Yes, ma'am. All right. Then you have another meeting like that, the one I just described with the prosecutors, in late September. Isn't that true? Yes. Now, I'm going to ask you again, just so the record is clear, that wasn't recorded either. Or it was? Everything is recorded to my knowledge. Okay. So then, the next day on September 30th of 2016, isn't it true that Detective Isom and Agent Sanford came to the Jefferson County Jail to take a statement from you? You remember that? Or did they pull you out of the jail? You tell me. 
No, I wasn't. I was in the jail. You were in the jail when they took. This was before you go on the ride along with them. Yeah. Okay. So, on that timeline, they meet with you in the jail and you provide them with a statement, right? Yeah. And the detectives are asking you all these questions, right? Yeah. But it's not recorded. Oh, I don't know about that. It's like I told you, to me, my knowledge, everything's recorded. Do you remember if Detective Isom or Agent Sanford, you know who those individuals are, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you remember if you saw them taking down notes? I can't remember. Okay. Now, after that meeting, isn't it true that you said you wanted 15 years for this? Yeah. Now, 15, I mean, you're already serving 12. Yes, ma'am. And so three would just be, I mean, if you get the gain time, if you do, you know, it's going to kind of line up. You wouldn't really spend too much time in state custody, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. You tell them at that time that Garcia is the shooter, Sigfredo Garcia, right? Yes, ma'am. And then the very next day, or it's not the next day, I think it's October 2nd, they actually come back to you and say that they're willing to offer you 19, right? In the charge for 25 and I denied it. Okay. But then after October 1st, they came back to you and now the deal was had at 19 years. 19, yeah. Did they tell you what happened on October 1st? No. Did they did I don't remember. Did you know that Katie was arrested on that day? After you spoke to them? I don't think so. I don't remember. You don't remember. Don't okay. Remember. Now, at that time, you finally, you sign an agreement, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the plea cooperation deal that you made with the state, right? Yes, ma'am. And that's actually a signed document with your signature on it. Yes, ma'am. And I'm sure your lawyer went over it with you, right? Yes. And it spells out what is expected of you, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you remember the details of that proper agreement? No, ma'am. That cooperation agreement. You do not, okay? So, um, but you do remember signing it? Yes, ma'am. All right. So I'm going to come back to that a little later, all right? So let's now talk. Now, and the, the final remaining statements, just so that I get your agreement on them so that we know it's accurate. November 29th, 2016, you meet in front of a grand jury to provide sworn testimony, correct? Yes, ma'am. You remember doing that? Yes, ma'am. Then on January 31st of 2018, you provided a depo to Mr. Zangane, deposition. Yes, ma'am. Okay, where he sat down and he was asking you questions with a court reporter, right? Yes, ma'am. And then on March 22nd, 2019, that's when you, we took your deposition, correct? Yes, ma'am. Same rules applied. You understand what your responsibilities were, were to tell the truth, correct? Yes. And I want to make sure I didn't miss anything out. I did leave one out. Actually, the only recorded statement that the cops took. On October 4th, after you've cut the deal, right? <coughs> you... Detective Isom and Agent Sanford and your lawyers finally sit down in a room, right? Yes, ma'am. And record your statement for the first time. According to them, it's the first recording we have of your statement. I guess. I don't know. I, don't know. I think he answered the question that he doesn't know. He presumed everything was recorded. It's the same. Okay. Have you seen that recording? No. You know that recording was released to the media? Yes, my family saw it. Your family saw it, right? Now, your family, who is the closest one you're to? Your, my your sister. Your sister. Which one? Maria? Yes, ma'am. Maria Rivera, she is your closest sibling, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, so now we're going to start jotting th some things down, and I want to keep this very organized with trip one and trip two, okay? Now, isn't it true that around this time in 2014, you were using molly like candy? I was using molly like candy. Mm -hmm. Not like candy, but I use it. You remember giving a statement in the deposition in Arizona? When I was there, Mr. DeCosta was yeah, there? I know you were there. Okay. I remember you being there. I okay. forget that. You never said that? I said I did not forget you being there. Okay. Is it your testimony you did not say that? No, I did. I oh, did. you did say it. Okay. So I, I took Molly's, but not like candy. I don't remember saying like candy, but I don't remember saying like candy, but I took Molly's. Okay. So I am going to refer the court and count as all counsels to page 41. So what about Molly? Line starting at line four and ending at seven. So what about Molly? MDMA. Oh yeah, Molly. We'll take Molly like candy. I forgot about Molly. Remember that? I just said I forgot about it. Okay. You also were doing cocaine. <laughs> yep. Now, I want to start. The major thing is the first time you found out from Sigfredo Garcia that you were going to Tallahassee to execute a father, a man that you did not know. Okay. Yes, ma'am. In direct examination, I don't know how we're going to do this because you testified to two things. At first, you testified that you found out that it was a murder on the way up to Tallahassee. Remember that? Yes, ma'am. And then on cross-examination with Mr. Zangane, you testified that you found out about it when you reached Tallahassee. You remember that? I said that yesterday? Yep. No, we're, oh. that's an improper question. Drew, remember what was said. It's not for you to uh, but, say what was said, Ms. Kowatch. Okay. Now on 
November 29th of 2016, you provided grand jury testimony, correct? Yes, I did my grandmother, yes, I remember. You remember. And there was a court reporter there, she took down everything you said. You knew what your obligation was, which is to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, right? Yes, ma'am. And that was actually two, three, almost three years ago. It was three years ago. Three years ago. Okay. Now, on that date, you remember that you said, I found out about it on half the way up. Remember that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, on September 30th of 2016, you told the detectives that you found out the, about the murder on the departure date, but you got more details on the d drive up. You remember telling them that? I don't remember. All right. Then on 10-4, your recorded statement, you said you found out before you even left Miami, and even before Garcia rented the car. Correct? I don't remember that. You don't remember saying that on the recorded statement? I don't remember. Okay. So we'll take that up a little later. Now on January 31st, you then go back and say that you find out about the drive, about the murder on the drive up. You were by Orlando. You remember that? I don't. I don't remember for it. Okay, so now you don't remember what you said in the depositions? No, it's it been five years ago. I can't remember all it is. Well, let's talk about the deposition that you gave a few months ago with me in March of 2019. Let's go. You said you found out the murder halfway up on the drive. Yeah, I remember telling you that. Now, Sigfredo Garcia told you on several occasions, on your different statements, that Wendy Adelson was the person financing this murder for highest thing. Is that true? Repeat the question again, please. That Sigfredo Garcia told you that Wendy Adelson was a person financing this murder. Yes, ma'am. Okay. On, but on 9.30, when you were talking to the detectives, you referred to her as the woman with two kids that wanted her ex-husband killed. Remember you told them that? Yes, ma'am. Then, on 10.4, you said... Sigfredo told you, Sigfredo Garcia told you that he got the money from the lady and he never said her name. That's what you said on 10-4, right? I don't remember. Don't remember. Then on 11-29, that's the first, that's when you say that Garcia told you that the money came from Wendy. Yeah. Then on January 31st, you said Sigfredo said again that Wendy was going to pay. Remember that? Yes, ma'am. But then, in March of, two, of 2019, you told us the dentist's sister wants her kids back. That's what you said. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, on the drive up, you previously testified that Sigfredo was constantly on the phone with Catherine on the drive up. He was on the phone all the time with Catherine. Okay, so your words back then were constantly on the phone. So is your testimony today, because this is important, is that he was sometimes on the phone with her? No, he was on the phone. He was on the phone. A lot? Yeah. Okay. That would be reflected on his phone records, right? Should be. It should be. Okay. Not if he got a throwaway phone. Did he have a throwaway phone? Yes, ma'am. But he only had one phone, right? That one phone was a throwaway phone. Just the throwaway phone? Yes, ma'am. What was the other phone that he had that was connected to his the actual line that he had? Describe it for me. We had two phones. I had I two phones. He got two phones. What phone did you have? I got two phones. I know you had two phones, but one was an iPhone, right? Both of them was iPhone. Oh, okay. So do you remember what type of phone he had? I know you said that there's a it's throwaway. A flip, a flip phone. A flip phone. Yeah. Okay. But you'd clearly remember that on the trip, the phone that he had was, was, a, flip phone. was a flip phone that's not the burner phone. That is the burner that phone. That is the burner phone. Yes, ma'am. The one that's not connected to the line that everybody knows. Oh, but yes. Okay. Now, on every single statement that you've ever made, except for the ones where you don't remember and that you denied everything, up until yesterday, you have consistently said that Garcia drove the entire drive up on the first trip. Yes, ma'am. It's only until they showed you the traffic ticket that you got that you changed and said, oh, wait, I may have driven on the first trip. Yeah, I, I drove the other half. I didn't remember. It had been a long time. I really didn't remember. But yeah, I did drove the other half. We had stopped. Like, Mount Tide, take the other half. And I took the other, the other way all the way up. OK, but if I go through each one of those statements, this, it will say that you said Garcia drove the entire way up. I, I, I could say that I said it. I didn't remember okay, until but I got the ticket. Until, until you got the ticket. ticket. Yeah. OK, now your lawyer didn't go over that with you? The ticket? Yeah. He did go over it with you. Me. Okay. But I thought I got the ticket on a Prius. But it says what confused. car that you have on the ticket. I know, but I was confused. Now, one thing that may have affected your ability to remember things is, let's talk about how much drugs you were using on the trip, okay? Now, you testified that you were, I mean, I don't know how much 15 grams are, but that sounds to me like it's a lot of cocaine. Is it a lot? Not really. It's not a lot? Okay. Um, how much would that... Street value. Less than like half an ounce. Half an ounce. Okay, that I can better visualize how much that is. Okay. Now, it wasn't just cocaine, though. I know yesterday you said you weren't smoking weed, but that's not true, is it? No, I didn't smoke no weed. I was on probation. I couldn't smoke weed. Okay. Do 
So your testimony today is you did not smoke weed, right? No, I didn't smoke no weed. Okay. You gave a statement, a recorded statement, to the detectives in this case on October 4th of 2016, correct? Yeah. The detectives were there, right? Yes, ma'am. Your lawyer was there, right? Yes, ma'am. And in fact, before they even put you on record, they explained to you what the consequence was for lying, right? Yes, ma'am. They explained to you that you'd be facing a misdemeanor perjury charge, is what they told you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, I'm referring court and counsel because it's recorded, right? And you told the truth at that time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. To page 14 of the October statement, starting at line 12 and finishing at line 16. And I said, all right, let's ride. Got in the car and he drove. I was on the passenger side. I was rolling a blunt and we drove. I was drinking the whole night that way. I don't think I, don't think I smoked. I can't, I can't remember, I don't think I smoked because I know I was on probation. But you were drinking and driving while you were on probation? Yeah, you can drink, it don't come out of my pizzas. Can you possess a firearm while you are on probation? No, not at all, you can't but do you, nothing when you're on probation. But you possessed a firearm though? Yeah. Okay. Now, Secreto Garcia was also drinking and doing drugs as well too, right? Yes ma'am. Now, you weren't taking any medication at that time? No ma'am. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to ask you, and this is on the first trip, is about the paper that you said Sigfredo Garcia pulled out. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Now, I think you said that it had a picture on it. Yes, ma'am. And that there was an address on it, is what you think it was. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And no one asked you, but what did the, what did the picture look like? Excuse me? What did the picture look like? A picture of him. I know. Describe it. A regular, a regular piece of paper. Okay. With a picture of him and the address. It was in black and white or color? Black and white. Okay. I think so. Now, you had no idea who Dan Markell was at that time. I don't know. You didn't even know the name? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, on September 30th of 2016, you told the detectives it was a color picture. I told them, is it black and white or color? I did not remember. I told them just like that. Hold on, because I need to write this down, because it's not recorded, um, that you told the detectives it was either a color pic... Or a black and white. ...picture or a black and white. You didn't know. That's what you told them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, on October 4th, 2016, you said it was black and white, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. But in deposition with me, you described this in detail that it was in color. I can't remember the, if it was black and white, so you y'all kept throwing this little, just throwing at me. So I told you it was black. I told you it was in color. So you weren't truthful when you told me that? Yeah, I was truthful, but I couldn't remember if it was black and white or in color. Just like I told you, take and I told you. But and just so that it's clear, because I'm not understanding right now, you answered my question. Yes, ma'am. And you said it was in color? Yes, ma'am. Remember at the end of the deposition, I asked if there's anything you needed to change? Yes, ma'am. You also remember if I said if there's anything important that you need to change, you let me know? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you didn't do that? I don't have your... How, how, that would be in the... What are we on, the color? Oh, that would be on the March deposition at page 87. You're welcome. 87? 87. Just make sure I don't page. want to be leading anyone. Hold on. 10 4. And I want to make sure the record is, is clear. Mm -hmm. Judge, I'm going to object improper yeah. impeachment. I don't think this is inconsistent. I'll ask the answer to be read. Let's ask. Let's be verbatim. Read the question. Yes, the hold answer. on, Your Honor, because I don't have it highlighted. Line 24. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, I'll read it. Thank you, Ms. Kakamon. So at the end of page 87 and the beginning of page 88, was the picture in color or black and white? Shit, I'm sorry. It's been a while. That's in the transcript, Judge. Um, probably was in color. I think he had a white shirt on. I'm not too sure. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now let's talk about, I think we already talked about the cell phones. You had two and he had one. Yes, ma'am. This is on trip one, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now the next topic I want to talk about is the number of guns that you brought on the trip, okay? Yes, ma'am. Now, we've already established that you're on probation in Miami-Dade at this time, right? Yes, ma'am. And uh, even though you testified in court that you found out on the trip up, right? Yes, ma'am. That's not true because you actually got the gun before you left. Isn't that true? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, before even leaving, you went and obtained the firearm that was used to kill Dan Markell. Yes, ma'am. And the reason you went and got another gun is because the gun that Sigfredo Garcia showed you, you said that wasn't good for a killing, correct? I thought it was a big-ass gun. And that it would blow someone's brains out, right? Yes, ma'am. That's what you told him? Yes, ma'am. So you then suggested, let me go find a better gun to kill someone else. He told me to find a smaller one, and I went and got another one. Okay. So you go into the street, right? This is the day of the murder. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no, this is uh, no. the day before you leave on the first trip. And you go to some kid in Overtown? 
Is yes, what you said? Okay. You don't know this person's name? No, ma'am. We'll never be able to find them? No, ma'am. But you bought a gun from him in cash? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, way before you even leave, <coughs> you, you know what you're going to tell has to do? To rob somebody. I was thinking we're going to go rob somebody. So, even still now, your testimony is that you didn't know it was a murder until, until you went up? Until I got in that car and we spoke to somebody going up there. But couldn't you only use one gun for a robbery? Why you need two? There's two people. So? Me and him. If, you just, if you're just going to take someone's money, you just need to point one gun at them, right? What happened if they pull on you? You have got your gun? We took two guns, ma'am. Okay, well, you're the expert. So, um, now, not only did you buy the gun before you left, you went and bought the bullets, right? Yes, ma'am. But we'll talk about that when we get to the second trip. So, you come up to Tallahassee now, and you have been consistent that two guns on the first trip. Everybody had two guns, right? Yes, ma'am. Now, the Mr. Zangane put up on the projecto your phone records. You saw that, right? Yes, ma'am. So you know that the prosecution, and you know from the evidence, that they have your phone records of you pinging up in Tallahassee. Yes, ma'am. Your lawyer went over that with you, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And would you be surprised for me to tell you that you were only on the first trip in Tallahassee one night? I can't remember that. Okay, but would the phone records be more accurate? Because they can't change the phone records, right? I guess not. I okay, know. so I, we can rely on the phone records as to how long you really stayed in Tallahassee. Yes, ma'am. Okay. One thing we do know is that you did get a traffic ticket at around 9 o'clock in the morning, okay? Yes, ma'am. So, the map situation. All right, so yesterday you testified that he didn't need a map? No, but he never asked me for no map. He said, uh, electronic. Okay, so you know on 9.30 you told the detectives no need for a map at all, he drove straight to the hotel. No, I think I told him we stopped and got a map in the, in the store. Okay, so. Another thing you told the detectives was that you stopped and got a map. And got a map. Okay. Okay. Now, another thing that you testified to is Garcia scoping out Dan Markell's house. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you're sure that this happened on the first trip? No, I'm not sure. Now you're not sure. Okay. Now, I want to ask you about something else that you, you talked about. Um, well, I actually can't remember if you talked about it. Was there an incident in Tallahassee where you pulled two guns on four people? Yes. Relevance? Overall. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you know if that was the first trip or the second trip? First trip. First trip. Okay. So, let's talk about that. Garcia had left the hotel room, I'll right? I'll sustain the objection at that point. Your Honor, th may we go the objection. Can we go sidebar? No. Move on. You never mentioned that incident to the detectives in September. Don't try to go sidebar with this judge. He's not going to have it. If he says no, move on. Did you? Objection. Sustained. <laughs> okay. So now let's talk about the second trip. You knew from the first trip, because you testified on this on direct, that Dan Markell was a father. Right? Yes, ma'am. You knew he had two kids. Yes, ma'am. So, in the month span between the first trip and the second trip, you yourself had a baby, right? Yes, ma'am. And then when Sigfredo Garcia came to you to ask you to go back to Tallahassee to execute this father, you had no problem with it, did you? That's my best friend. I took the ride with him. So you had he said no he problem with me, it. So I took the ride with him. So you had no problem with it. Yes, ma'am. You didn't call the police, did no. you? You didn't try to talk him down like you did with the car. No, ma'am. And you probably could have, but you didn't. No, ma'am. So now you're driving up, up to Tallahassee to kill this man that you don't know. And correct me if I'm wrong, in between that time, you never had any face-to-face -face meetings with Catherine. No, ma'am. Okay, never even spoke to her. No. Nope. Okay, so before you leave on this trip, you go and rent the Prius. Yes, ma'am. It's in your name. Yes, ma'am. You drove. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> the gun used to kill Dan Markell. That was your gun, right? Yeah, about in the corner. Yes, ma'am. The one you bought. Yeah. The Not one my you, gun. The one you bought the bullets for. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The gun, the other gun, what do you call it? The long nose? Yes, ma'am. That wasn't used. No, ma'am. Okay. Now let's talk about how many guns were taken on the second trip. How many guns were on the second trip? I think we took one. Okay, so your testimony today is that you think you took one. Yeah. Okay. 
You remember giving a deposition, in this case on January 31st of 2018, with Mr. Zangane? Yeah, I remember taking a deposition with him. Okay. And you swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, like you're doing today? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Court and Counsel, page 94. Lines 3 to 10. Garcia, he had the gun. The little small one, the black one. Not the long nose? No, he busted. Who had the long nose? He did. He had both of them by his leg. He had both guns? Yeah. That was a first trip. Would you like me to go back further and give you a little more context? No, ma'am. Because this is when you were talking about the shooting of the hole in the bottom of the Prius. Yes, ma'am. So it's a second trip. And Your Honor, I can hear Ms. Kaplan saying things behind me. If we could ask her to just come down. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, on this second trip, isn't it true that you brought with you masks and hoodies? Yeah, I always kept them in my car regardless. Okay, but you brought them with you, right? Yes, ma'am. And this would be in an attempt to conceal your identity? Yes, ma'am. But you never told the detectives about that on 9.30, right? I don't remember. Okay. You didn't tell them about it in September? I don't remember. Okay, we'll make it easy. The first time you ever talked about bringing hoods and masks and all of these things was January 31st, right? I think I, had, I, was, I brought them, but I don't remember telling them nothing about no mask. So I can ask the detectives? Oh, you can ask them. All right. Another thing that you testified to now, how was uh, Mr. Garcia's phone communication with Ms. McManwell on the ride out? They talk a lot? Yeah. How much? I don't remember. Okay, and all of this will be reflected on his phone, or did he have a throwaway phone this time? He had a throwaway phone. Okay. And uh, how did you know it was Catherine McDonald he was talking to? He's the only person he talked to is her. He don't talk to nobody else. He doesn't talk to his girlfriend, Shrimp? Not in that phone. Doesn't talk to his mom? No. Okay. So the only phone number in his phone records should be Catherine's, right? I mean, if he, on the throwaway phone, you ain't gonna find, I don't think you'll find some phone numbers. Well, then Catherine wouldn't be calling him on his regular phone if she knows about the throwaway, right? she called call him on the throwaway. They have okay. a throwaway phone. So there should be no records of any calls with Catherine on his real phone. I can't tell you that. Okay. What was Catherine McDonald's phone number back then? Uh, the last four, I can tell you, I think it was 13, 16, or 13, 16, 17, 16. around there. Okay. Now, the first day on the second trip, okay, you say that you went and you scoped out the house, right? The first trip? Second trip, second now. Trip. We're not, we're, I'm done with the first trip. We'll All just right. focus on the second trip, okay? So now you've driven up to Tallahassee with Garcia. You guys are in the Prius, okay? Yes, ma'am. And day one, you scope out Dan Markel's house. Yes, ma'am. Okay. There was a couple times where you actually see him going and you follow him to the daycare. Right? Yes, ma'am. And you see him drop his kids off, right? Yes, ma'am. But you don't abandon the plan? No, ma'am. Now, the very next day, which would be the Thursday, the day before the murder, isn't it true that you say that you saw Wendy Adelson walking on Trescott Drive? Yes, ma'am. This is the, the street of Dan Markell's house? Yes, ma'am. You remember that this took place before 12 p.m., correct? Yeah. And what you saw was she was two houses down from Markel's house with the boys, right? Yes, ma'am. You say that you guys come face to face with each other. Face to face? I'm in the car driving. Right. but She's that, walking. She's walking. So I are can you... See it, I can see it through my rear mirror. I looked at her. I, see, I can see it through my rear mirror looking at the car. So just so I can picture it in my mind, are you guys walking in the same direction or is she walking towards you? We're not walking. I'm in the car driving. No, no, I, I she's know, walking. I apologize. So you're driving. Are you driving towards her face to face? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's what I was asking you. And you testified today that she got on the phone as soon as you passed her. Yes, ma'am. And then she then walked up into Dan Markell's house. Yes. That you remember her seat with the boys walking up into she Dan Markell's house. I think she had passed his house. I can't remember. I'm not even going to say that. I can't remember. Okay. So it, you, you know where I'm going with this. You yeah, know you didn't say that in any of your statements, right? I don't remember. Okay. Do you remember that you say... So at this point, you see this woman and you, you say you recognize that she's staring at you. So you bring it to Mr. Garcia's attention, right? Yes, ma'am. What was his response? That's that lady. That's the lady with the kids. Okay. So he didn't even say her name? I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay. Do you know on, uh, you remember giving the recorded statement on October 4th of 2016 with the detectives? The one that's online? No. You don't remember? I, I don't remember the, okay. the recording, but... You said that Sigfredo told you that's Wendy and that she came to make sure everything is all right. I just told you right. I don't remember. So you don't remember that either. 
Is that what your testimony is today? The day of the, uh, when I had the, with the detective, I remember telling him that, but I re right now I'm telling you, I don't remember. You refreshed my memory, though, so. No, that's fine. So when I told you that you said that, you remember that you told that to the police? Yeah, right now I do. Okay. And you told them it happened before 12? Yeah. And that Sigfredo already knew it was Wendy? Yeah. All right, so let's talk about someone by the name of Mr. Nobles. Who is that? Nobles. Shadrick Nobles. I think he was selling you guys some stuff while you were in Tallahassee? Oh, yeah. Okay. Shadrick Nobles, the guy who was selling you cocaine? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you guys got his phone number from the first trip, right? Yes, ma'am. And you happened to run into him again on the second trip, right? Yes, ma'am. So whose phone had his phone number in it? He put the number on my phone, but he tried to call him from his phone. He wouldn't answer, so he called him from my phone. Okay. So any calls from your phone to Nobles, is Garcia making it on your phone? Yeah, you'll hear his voice if you got a recording. Okay. And since he was only using a throwaway phone, there should be no phone calls between your phone and Garcia's registered phone. I never, got, I never called Garcia from my phone. No, no, that wasn't my question. My question was, is because you say he only had a throwaway, you two weren't communicating on, I mean, you guys were always together. There would be no need yes, for any phone calls. No, 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 no phone calls. No phone calls. Okay. Now, do you remember in your, hold on, let me see which page that is. Your statement that you gave to the police. Hold on, thanks. Now, you told us, okay, that you told this to the detective. That's Wendy. Remember that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And isn't it true that the detectives then showed you a picture of her? Show and you me. ID'd her? Yes, ma'am. That sounds familiar to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we should have a picture of Wendy Markell with uh, uh, Wendy Adelson with your signature on it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, the next day is the murder, right? Yes, ma'am. Um, now, before the murder, did something unusual happen with the, the car? Before the murder? Before the murder. Yeah, he shot a hole right through the car. Who shot a hole through the car? Garcia. Okay, what gun was he using? The little one. The little one, the one that was used to kill Dan Markell? Yes, ma'am. Where was the long nose? We didn't have a long nose. Okay. I don't think we had one. Now, the shooting on, of, of the car, the person who was there that can testify to that is Shadrick Nobles, right? Uh, he don't know nothing about it. We ain't never told him. But you, he drove you to the auto zone? He drove Garcia to the auto zone. Okay, to pick up parts to repair the car and come back, right? Yes, ma'am. And he saw you guys there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is this someone from Tallahassee? Yeah, I think he's in Tallahassee. All right. Now, let's also talk about this <coughs> owl on Instagram. Okay? On September, well, today in trial, you testified that you had put an owl on Instagram. Yes, ma'am. And that. Just an FYI for the folks coming in, this attorney uh, does speak that fa fast, but not that fast. This is on 1.25 speed. Otherwise, we're never going to finish all of Tato's testimony from the first trial and the other trials before Thursday, because on Thursday and Friday, I want to do Katie's uh, testimony and her proffers as well. Katie called Sigfredo. Catherine McVanwell called Sigfredo Garcia, who then told you, take the picture down. Yes, ma'am. And you took the picture down. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, you didn't mention this at all in your September 30th statement. I don't remember. You mentioned it to the detectives in your recorded statement, which is the October 4th one, right? I don't remember. You mentioned it, you didn't mention it at all in January, right? I don't think so. Nobody ever asked me, so I don't remember. But then you told us it was either Facebook or Instagram, right? Yes, ma'am. But since October 4th of 2016, the detective knew that you had an Instagram account, right? Yes, ma'am. You told them? Yeah. Okay. They also knew you had a Facebook account? I ain't never put up. Somebody did a Facebook under my name. Never did it myself. What was your Instagram name? My name. Mm -hmm. My name. Oh, Luis Rivero? Yeah. You sure about that? But no, that one would have been Tado. King oh. Tado. King Tado. King Tado. Okay. Now, you testified earlier that Garcia asked you to commit the murder, right? Yes, ma'am. And he asked you this the day before the homicide. Yes, ma'am. All right. So let's talk about the day of the homicide. You get up in the morning and you know that you are going to go kill Dan Markell, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. No attempts made to stop anybody, right? Yes, ma'am. You guys get in the car, you're driving, mm -hmm. and you follow Dan Markell to the daycare and watch him drop his kids off, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You wait till he gets back in his car, and then he goes to the gym, right? Yes, ma'am. You sit there and you wait for him to get out. Yes. And then you go to his house. 
and you follow him to his house, right? Yes. And your testimony is, is that you pulled up behind him in the driveway, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. And that Sigfredo Garcia got out and shot him, right? Yes, ma'am. Isn't it true that you knew that Markel put his hand up to his face, Dan Markel? Yeah. Okay. Now, Sigredo Garcia was doing coke and alcohol all morning, right? Yeah. And you were too? I woke up, took a shower, probably. I don't think, I don't remember that. You don't remember? All morning? I don't remember that. Okay. Do you remember if you consumed anything that morning? I don't. I don't okay. remember. Don't remember. But you may not have because you needed to keep a clear head? Probably. Okay. Now, a big thing that everyone is making, or that you're making a big deal about, something you remember, is this first phone call after uh, you guys murder Dan Markell and leave Tallahassee, right? Yes, ma'am. He just, you're, according to you, he just jumps in the car and you guys take off, right? That's true. But isn't it true you told the detectives that you drove slowly because you didn't want to bring any attention to yourself? Yeah, he okay. wanted me to drive fast. I was like, no, I'm going to... You're going to take it slow, it right? Happened. Yeah. And there's no phone calls until this first phone call that you say to Katie, right? Yes, ma'am. And this is all laid out in your discovery, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And in the deposition, you said that what Sigfredo said, what you heard, well, let me get this, because I need to understand this. Did you hear Catherine McVanua's voice, or did Garcia tell you that Katie said what she said? I can hear her voice. You could hear her voice. Isn't it true that in September, when you were speaking to the detectives, you first told them, Garcia told you, but then you switched to, I could hear Katie myself? I don't remember that. I'll ask the detective. Now, she wasn't on speaker, right? No. Your testimony is on this flip phone that Garcia has up to his ear that you can hear Catherine's voice, right? I don't know if he called it. I can't remember if it was a flip phone or my phone, but I can hear her. But you can hear her? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, you already testified that you don't talk to her on the phone, right? I don't. You're not friends with her? I know her. You know her? Yeah, I know her. But you guys don't talk on the phone every day? I don't. I don't know the reason to call her. I understand, but I'm saying you don't. No, ma'am. You don't speak to her on the phone every day, right? No, ma'am. She doesn't speak with an impediment, does she? What does that mean? Does she speak with like a any type of stutter or you know anything that would make her voice stand out? No. Does she speak with an accent? Katie, okay, okay, no. No. Okay. Now let's talk about the different things that you say that Secreto Garcia said. Okay. I'm going to go in order. In September 30th, you said this is what you told the detective. He said, it's done, and she said, I know. Yes, ma'am. That was it, okay? Then, on January 31st, in your deposition, you said that Sigfredo said, the shit is done. Katie said, I already know. Then Sigfredo said, make sure the money is there. And then Katie said, you're gonna go get your money. Yes, ma'am, she said, next day. Okay, so, then you say, in the deposition, all the way in March, it changes again, right? Because now you say, he says, it's done. When do we get the money? I asked who you are calling. He said, you know, I got to call my baby mama. That's what you said in March. Yes, ma'am. So it's fair to say that you don't remember exactly what was said on the phone, right? I mean, it's worded different, but it's the same thing. No, but these are your words I'm talking about. Yes, You've consistently changed what you heard. No, I ain't changed nothing. Okay. Now, yesterday, well, let's talk a little bit about your status in federal custody, okay? So... In 2015, right, yes, you were in jail. Yes. Talk to me about what do they do when you're in jail to your phone calls? They type all your phone calls. So all your phone calls are recorded, right? To this day. To this day. And so the state can get them if they want to, right? Yeah. They also have all of your emails, right? Yes, ma'am. Explain to the jury what Coralinks is. It's a, you can um, text. I mean, well, send emails out there to the world. Okay. So you can actually email people from federal prison, mm -hmm. right? You can't do that in state. No. No. I don't know what state. I don't, I've never been to state, so I don't know nothing about state. You've never been to state? Talk to me about the feds. Oh, okay. So you, the feds is where you've got your knowledge, right? Yes, ma'am. So, I mean, to be clear, while you're staying here in Tallahassee, you're in state custody, right? Yeah. You don't get to email, right? I mean, you got tablets. Oh, they have that now? They have them, yeah. Okay, but they didn't, to your knowledge, they didn't have that back in 2014, right? No. Okay. And uh, here, too, all of your phone calls are recorded, right? Every day. Okay. And uh, in the feds, it's, if someone comes to visit you, it's a full-on contact visit, right? Yes, ma'am. So if a family member came to see you, you can actually sit there with them face-to-face -face and have a conversation, right? Yes, ma'am. That's not recorded. That's not recorded. All right. So now let's talk about when... Oh. There we go. 
Right now, over the past couple of days, you've testified that there were only two trips in this case, right? Yes, ma'am. Isn't it true there was a third one? I can't remember. You can't remember, okay? Do you remember telling me in the deposition that there was a third trip that didn't involve you? Oh yeah, I remember telling you that, but it wasn't me. Okay, no, but you remember telling me that I you knew you, about. I told you he probably it. came up here with somebody else. Okay. That's what I told you. But you told us about that, right? Yeah. Okay, and that I think your words were he went up there with another king. Yeah. But you never mentioned that in any one of your other statements, correct? Nobody asked me but you. I asked you if there was a third trip, or yeah. you offered that information to me. No, you asked me if there was more than there's more more trips. Okay. So I'm going to refer you back to the deposition, okay? That you took with us in Arizona. State was there. You were swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Let's go to page 102. Just find the correct. Thank you. The first trip in June, the second trip, and the third trip. Every time we went up there, we was always coked up and drinking. You said that to us, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now let's talk about the day that you returned to Miami, which is the same day as the shooting, correct? Because you guys just leave. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you come back to Miami. Now, you are living with Jessica Rodriguez at that time, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. She is the mother of Lulu, correct? Yes, ma'am. She had just had the baby, right? Yes. You weren't living with Leona Diaz, were you? No. Leona Diaz is the mother of one of your children, correct? Three of my children. Three of your children, okay. And she is the address that is the Normandy Drive address, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, the one that's on your driver's license. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, you come back to Miami, right? And you, Garcia dropped, off, dropped you off yes, and kept the Prius with him. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That night, you guys all go out and drink. Yes, ma'am. After you killed Dan Markel. Yes, ma'am. The next morning, your testimony is that you went to the barber shop. Yes, ma'am. This barber shop is called it's not King, the King Barber Shop, right? Ray's, Ray's, Ray's something, Ray's King. I don't know. It's right by Biscayne Boulevard, correct? Yeah. On One Thirty Fifth Street. One Thirty Nine. One Thirty Nine. That's where the the the. the yes, ma'am. It is right. It's not on Miami Beach. No, ma'am. Okay. Annie lives on Miami Beach. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, your testimony is, is you are at the barbershop yes, when you get a phone call. Yes, ma'am. All right? It's Jessica calling you. Yes, ma'am. Hey, babe, Katie and Tutu are here. That's what she tells you, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, on 10-4, you say that this is a conversation that you had with Jessica. Tutu's got a bag. You say, don't touch the bag. I'll be there right now. Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, Jessica is there with... Catherine Matt Banwin, Sigfredo Garcia, in the house by herself with yes, the package. Yes, ma'am. Right? Okay. Now, your testimony was is that Catherine Matt Banwin called you looking for Tuto, right? Yes, ma'am. Can we rely on your phone records for accuracy? Yeah, I don't see why not. Your phone records would be more accurate than your memory, right? Yeah. So the phone records should show Catherine calling you, right? Yes, ma'am. Not you calling Catherine. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now... Where were you when you say Catherine called you? In the barbershop. Who called Oh, no, first? no. I was in my house. I was leaving my house. So you were at home, but... Yeah, I was, I, was, I was in my house. Which home? Jessica. Jessica's home when Katie called you. <coughs> right? Yeah. Uh, when Catherine McDonald called you. And in January of 2018, you testified that she said, I got that money for you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that Catherine called you and said that to you. Yeah, she said, who's going to come get that money? So Who's that's different from what you said in January. So what is it that she said on the phone? Who's going to come get the money? Uh, page 105 on January 31st of 2018. And the line number would be... What page is it? 105. Uh, line 16 to 18. So Katie called you. Yeah, she was like, man, I got that. I got that money. I got that money for you. That's, That's what you said then. That's my own. Okay. Now, your testimony was you called King Anthony to go find Tuto. That's my own. And Tuto is Sigfredo Garcia. That's my own. All right. Did you try to find him? No. You didn't call him? I knew where he was at. Where was he? Shrimp's house. Okay. And I don't know if I asked you this. Where is Shrimp's house again? Miami Beach. Miami Beach, okay. Can, how far is Miami Beach from Biscayne? Like 10 minutes. 10 minutes? 
How is it from Jessica's house all the way to Normandy? There's 10 minutes. There's only one bridge. There's one bridge. Okay, so your testimony today is that it takes 10 minutes. It takes like 10, 15 minutes the most. That's it. Okay. Um, how much time does it... Stop and point, Ms. Klaus, the jury is probably about four minutes. Your Honor, we can take a break now. I mean to interrupt. If this no, no, it's totally fine because um, I, there's still a little bit more. It's not a little, so I thought right. we can take the break Leave now. your nose where you are. Have a lunch break. Uh, see you at 1 o'clock, all right? Let's stay in session for a minute. All right, folks, that's going to be it for today's testimony of Tato. We will continue tomorrow. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Mods, as always, for all the hard work you do. We really appreciate it. Um, I have the portal set up to go to Publicly Buzz show tonight. Um, if, you, if you're new to the channel and you like this channel, you'll absolutely love Steve and Dan, so check it out. Get it in the algorithm. Um... And again, well, tomorrow, 10 a.m., we will continue this testimony, try to finish it off. Then Thursday and Friday, we'll do Katie McBonawa. Um, thank you so much, everybody, and have a good night. And uh, make sure to like the uh, stream that we're going to for Publicly Buzzed. All the new folks, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, love everybody. Love you guys. See you tomorrow, everybody. Thank you for being part of J-Bo Nation. Joining us, j -Bo Nation, please give all of yourselves an ovation. No, we won't be real long until next time. Oh, j -Bo Nation, there's no place we'd rather be. j, -J, -J -Bo Nation is the place to be. j, -J, -J -Bo Nation is the place to be. j, -J, -J -Bo Nation is the place to be. j, -J -Bo Nation is the place to be.